What is up, everybody, from our AT&T 5G virtual studios? Welcome to MLS Club and Country, the Watch Along Show on what is a huge, huge day in World Cup action. Group B, the final match for the United States against Iran. Everything is on the line. Literally everything. They win and they will advance to the knockout rounds if they lose or draw. It all ends here. Um, so this is a big one. We're all a little uh, on edge, I think. Um, but I cannot be more excited to be joined by these two guys. My guy, Charlie Davies, wearing his lucky T-shirt. I love it so much. Um, and we have you guys. This is uh, a really, really special guest. Stephen Betashore, who is a veteran MLS defender. He's played for the Quakes, the Whitecaps. Won MLS Cup with Toronto FC. Played for LAFC. Won a Supporters Shield with them. Um, and he also represented the Iranian national team in 2014 World Cup in Brazil, um, where he played under the same head coach that is uh, coaching them now in Carlos Karish. So uh, Stephen Bedeshaw, it is so great to have you on. We were talking about it. I'm here. I've got my popcorn because I'm stress eating. Like, I think we're all in this like weird headspace right now ahead of this one. And for you in particular, I know that it's kind of like you're it's like, which child do you do you love more? You know, it's an impossible question for you because you played for Iran. You're from the United States. Like, what? where is your head at right now? Yeah, I mean, I should have thought of that, the popcorn, because uh, I am definitely nervous. That's a good way uh, to get over the, the stress and uh, the pressure. Uh, yeah, it's it's a weird one. You, you, you said it. If you have two kids. <laughs> yeah, there you go, Charlie. Uh, <laughs> You know, which one do you love more? You love them both. You can't choose. You want, look, when, when the brackets came out, I said, okay, Iran and U.S., you both are going through. But right now, uh, if one of them wins, they will get through. I'll have a team in the round of 16, so I'll be happy, but I will be so nervous watching this game. <laughs> I feel it. I feel it. Yeah. Charlie, well, how are you doing? Where are you at right now emotionally? I, emo emotionally, I'm, I'm a wreck. I, I am, my stomach's in knots. I'm, a, I'm so anxious. I'm excited. I, I believe in the, the U S group to get the job done and win. It's not going to be easy at all, but needless to say, I'm nervous. I, I got my pistachios here. I'm eating my pistachios. I got a, a coffee. I got water. Uh, I am ready. I'm locked in, but I am nervous. <laughs> Probably <laughs> similar to how beta is feeling right now. Amazing. Amazing. Um, guys, we've, um, I, I, again, I just, this is the stakes could not be, be higher, right? This is the, the final match of the group stage. I love how I, it is exciting that like so many of these group stage games, like it's all come down to the final game, right? I mean, this is what you want. This is what you want in a, in a world cup, everything, everything matters. Um, but I guess like, you know, when we think about what's what's at stake, Charlie, do you think this is the is this the biggest game for the U.S.? I'm trying to think of like 2014, like maybe like the 2014 game against oh, Belgium. Is this, yeah, like no, how, no. how where is this in terms no, of like importance? Even close. Uh, no, no, Mexico in the round of 16, 2002 World Cup, and then they had Germany in the quarterfinals. Okay. And Greg Berhalter's uh, header came off uh, the Mexican defender's hand on the uh, German defender's hand on the line. If we had VAR back then, uh, I know Christian Uncle would have been like, eh, yeah, that's going to be a, a penalty and a red card. Um, but uh, I'd say that would probably be the biggest game uh, uh -huh. in terms of the U.S. men's national team. I look at the Confederations Cup final against Brazil in 2009, um, a FIFA Cup final. You're playing against uh, – we, we played against the, the eventual World, Ch uh, World Cup champions in Spain. We beat them in the semifinals. Uh, we had beat the previous uh, – we lost to the previous World Cup champions in Italy. But that was a massive game to play in a final against Brazil. And then you look at 2014 and 2010. Um, you, you lost to Ghana in 2010, and, and then Ghana loses in a heartbreaker to Uruguay. Uh, that team had potential to get to a World Cup semifinal. When you think about it, 2014 – they lose to Belgium. Belgium completely outplayed them, but Tim Howard stood on his on his <laughs> head. And, and Chris Wondolowski, of all people, had the chance to send uh, U.S. To, to the next round. And, oh, was Wando. Not to convert. So I'd say this is up there. It's up um, there. Not quite. Probably top, top 10, for sure, top mm -hmm. 10, but mm -hmm. not top five. Okay. <laughs> okay. 
I feel like that's like, that's made me a little nervous. Cause I think I was like, I talked myself into a place where I'm like, this is everything. It it's all not, matters. It's, it's not, legacy it's on the line. It's a big um, because it's still the group stage, right? Charlie? Like if it were round of 16 semis, yeah, for sure. Yes. But it's still the group it's stage. It's still the group mm -hmm. stage. Yeah. And, and it's, and it's, and it's Iran, not to say that Iran's not, you know, Argentina and Spain and, you know, Brazil, but Steven, a... get after him. I... Yeah. Well, <laughs> hey, you know, you know yeah. where I'm coming from. <laughs> Look, when I said this was the group of death, it's uh, as far as England, Wales, U.S., and Iran, those are the four highest uh, seeded teams out of any group. Mm -hmm. So people don't necessarily think Iran is uh, a powerhouse. They're not, but they are very good. If you looked at uh, Asian qualifiers for the last three World Cups, you know, they were the top team uh, under Carlos Karish's kind of realm for 14, 18, and this one. So people probably don't understand that they're this good because they don't watch them. And I understand, like, it's it's not on ESPN or mm -hmm. FS1 or, you know, the networks sure. here. You have to, like, stream it uh, just to watch it. So uh, I get it. I get why Charlie says that. I get why other analysts say that. Uh, but Iran's good. They, okay, but in we're, 2004, not we're not wrong. In 2014, uh, if we won in the last game, we would have gotten through against uh, Bosnia. 2018. There was a sitter Tarmi missed in the 93rd minute, and we would have beat Portugal 2 1. And I and bet you think about through. that frequently, yeah. don't you? I, I always I always go, yeah, if we won against Trinidad and Tobago, <laughs> then we wouldn't be having really all this discussion. Could have, could have, would have, should have. Could have, would have, should have. There's a whole stop lot it. of that. Yeah. Better Look, stop it. Whole lot so of we that. Are not, we are not eliminated right now. So that's. <laughs> You know, that's okay. good. So. Ooh, this is so fiery. Um, yeah, there's guys. There's, I want to remind everybody that I have the YouTube chat up, um, the Twitch chat. We want you guys to get in there, ask us questions, comments. Um, we also we've got um, Paco X in the YouTube chat. Parents are from um, Iran, so he's going for Iran, very similar to oh, uh, to Steven. Okay. So I get it. You know, that's a, respect. It's tough. It's it's a tough decision. Um, but as we can see on our screen, this is what Group B looks like right now. Um, so you know, here's the scenarios. Right for the U.S., we know you have to win. You have to win this game in order to go through to the knockouts. Um, a win and an England loss to Wales mean that the U.S would top the group, which would be crazy. Um, but a, a loss or a draw, not good enough. You're out. And then for Iran, win or draw, um, and they're through with the Wales loss or draw. Is that correct? I get very confused with these scenarios. I think that's right. So basically, if U.S. win, they're in. If yeah. Iran win, they're, they're in. in. That's keep it simple. Simple. Yes. And there is one weird scenario that involves goals different differential that Anders, our producer, told me that I can't remember at all. If Wales that's, beats that's England, not likely. Yeah, and that's so not likely. we draw, <laughs> and Wales wins by four, four goals, then yeah, they're in. They're in. They're in. Easy. Easy enough. Just, yeah, win and you're in for both teams. Um, yep. Let's look at the starting lineups for, for both teams. We'll start with the United States. Charlie, um, no Brendan Aronson. Mm -hmm. No Walker Zimmerman. Mm -hmm. What no what are we what are we what do we make of this? What do we think? What does this say about um you know what Greg Berhalter his approach in this match? I understand the Cameron Carter Vickers uh, mm -hmm. being inserted into the lineup just because Walker Zimmerman would be a target for Iran whenever he's when he has possession. So they would lock off Tim Ream in the buildup. And they would say, we're going to force it to Zimmerman. We're going to press him. And he's either going to make a five-yard pass to Adams. He's going to make a five-yard pass to Dest. And we are going to lock them in. You saw that against the Wales in the Wales match. Iran did a good job of, okay, Chris Mepham gets on the ball, the center back for Wales, not the best with the ball at his feet. We're pressing. And they were aggressive in the press, and they could turn it over. So I think Greg was thinking, all right, Cameron Carter-Vickers, better at, with the ball at his feet and passing. And he, he's not going to be a big drop off in terms of set pieces, defending set pieces and crosses, because that's all he does in Scotland. They play long balls. They play to his head. I feel like that'll work. So I think um, that's what went into that, to that change. I don't know if I would necessarily agree with it because I thought Tim Ream and Zimmerman did a, a pretty damn good job. Uh, yeah. If you take, a, take the whole picture from both matches, Zimmerman made up, uh, made a big mistake in the Wales game, of course. And then just probably two air, passes that were errors in, in the game against England but otherwise those two were were spot on with each other so that partnership I don't know if I agree with that at this stage mm -hmm. and then in the midfield 
strong as can be. That is the heart, the strength of the U.S. men's national team is that midfield trio of Musa, Adams, McKinney. But they just need to have production. Mm -hmm. uh, I think McKinney got that opportunity. It's going to be big today because uh, just like England, we're able to start to, to punish Iran. Weston McKinney makes fantastic runs out of midfield, the late run into the box. And I think Destin Robinson will have space to serve the ball. It's going to be on him to find the gaps and then and then meet that header with the crosses. And then up up top, you knew Christian wasn't going to change. He looks like he's finally getting into the rhythm, uh, into a rhythm where he plays at his best, into the zone. I love that about him. Mm -hmm. uh, Timothy Weah is is 100% a starter in this team. I thought we would have seen him at the nine to get one more influential player on the ball, which would have been Brendan Aronson, I think, in this case. Gio Reyna, I think, is not quite at 100% uh, match fitness and, and sharpness to, to get the start. Mm -hmm. But he went with Josh Sargent because I thought – there were moments in the game against Wales where he held up the ball well. He was a big contributor in the goal for for Timothy Wea and his hold up play. Just needs to be dangerous. Uh, for the first fifteen minutes, he made some hard runs in the box, got a flick a flick header that came off the near post. Uh, but ultimately, I think in this game, he's got to be making hard runs, and that's why Greg put him into the, to the team because of his movement in the box. So uh, ultimately, a very strong squad. You have two game changers off the bench and Brandon Aronson and Gio Reyna. I'm not mad. So okay. it, here we go. I, Charlie's I wouldn't not be surprised mad. If things aren't going well. Change at halftime. You have Charlie's two guys to come in. Mad at it. Um, all right. Great stuff. Let's switch it on up to um Iran. Steven, the starting lineup for for them. What do you make of this uh this starting eleven? What should we be watching for? Yeah, I'm not too surprised that. The starting 11 minus Ali Reza in goal, who is the usual starter. Uh, looks like he passed concussion protocol, so he's back in. But uh, yeah, it's the same starting 11 uh, that they put up against Wales, and they did very well. They they look good. They had good energy um, fighting for a first and second ball. So uh, I, I'm excited. Uh, you know, I, I didn't personally know Golizade on the right. Uh, and I was so impressed with him. He didn't start the first game against England, but mm -hmm. he started against Wales. And I was so impressed with his energy. And every time he got the ball, like his tenacity, just to go at the defenders and make something happen, whether he was slipping guys through, whether he's taking a shot on goal, uh, I thought he was really good. So he's going to be a key key today. Um, and, you know, we'll see how much they attack, you know, because of the scenario. They don't necessarily have That's, to win like that the was going to be my question to you. Like, how do they yeah. approach this, knowing that they could get they could get through if if they draw and England beat Wales? I mean, how how does that affect the the game plan? Yeah. So the last uh, three World Cups, 14, 18 and this one. uh They've been very good defensively, minus one game. And obviously that's the England game. Mm -hmm. You you add up the goals for the England game, they haven't given up that many goals in the entirety of 14, 18, or uh, this World Cup. So they're very good defensively. Just take out that one game, which we'll, I'm sure we'll speak about it later, uh, all the political issues and mm -hmm. uh, what's going on in the country. That weighed too much on them for that first game. But against Wales, we saw Team Ali. We saw the team that we expected to show up to the World Cup. And they were phenomenal. They're going to defend. They're going to... You know, they're going to sit deep, but they will also put pressure when when the time is right. You know, I don't think they're going to necessarily chase the entire mm -hmm. field. They might start the line of confrontation around center field, maybe five or 10 yards above that. But uh, but they're going to be defensively sound and look to counter just because of the scenario. You know, they don't have to win. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a tie will get them through barring some crazy outcome in the in the Wales England game where Wales wins. But uh, let's let's hope that I'm curious. Happen. Ben, how do you feel about the goalkeeper coming back into the team? Because I thought Hussein did a good job of filling in, and you saw yeah. him like coming mm -hmm. off a shutout, clean sheet. Good question, Chuck. Yeah. yeah, you know, yeah. Is it, do, do you feel that that changes anything, the, especially like the relationship with the line and, and the confidence versus a keeper that maybe is not all 100%, you know? I, I hope he is all 100% because – when he is, he's very good. There's a big difference between him and uh, Hosseini, the backup keeper, who, look, I understand the England game, nobody played well for Iran, mm -hmm. including him. But against Wales, he had some pretty good saves. He didn't have a lot to do, but when his number was called, he did well. Um, but I, I think it's, look, if, if Ali Reza uh, Baron Vad is good to start 
you got to put him in. I, I heard he wanted to play against Wales, but uh, because of the concussion, concussion protocols, FIFA said, you know what? No, you have to sit out. There's a time frame, this and that. So I heard he he wanted to play, as most players do. But maybe that little extra rest was good for him, and he should be good to go uh, today. Oh, man. I'm All nervous. right. Here we I go. know, guys. Yeah. Um, just want to remind everyone, too. Um, I will uh, start the clock if you want to sync up with us. Um, but we are literally moments away from kickoff. And I will tell you, a lot of times... This is kind of a mess because, you know, we're, we're relying on on funky Internet connections here. So sometimes one of us is like really far behind. It's it just, you know, it's all part of the chaos um, and the beauty of these watch alongs. So um, as soon as it kicks off, I will let you guys know where I'm at. You can sync up and yeah, onward. Ooh, where's my popcorn? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I should have wore a heart rate monitor. My Seriously, heart is I just, just oh. I just got like a wave of like, oh my god. Okay, guys, we are oh, off. So nervous. Literally All right. just kicked off. Where are you good at? Luck. Did it did good it luck for both teams? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm not kicked off yet. So but you go I'm ahead. You go ahead. I'm at 10 seconds in. That's just great. One. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> just I'm alerting still everyone. For I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna refresh mine. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. There we go. I'm at 17, 18. Is that where you're at, Susanna? Yeah. I'm at 22 now. 23, okay. 24. That's okay. 25. Yeah. yeah, that's fine. We're good. That's good. Perfect. We're good. We're good. Oh, um, Beta, I wanted to talk a little bit about what you mentioned um, with kind of the, I mean, this was always going to be a politically charged matchup between these two teams based on everything that's going on. And we saw, you know, the press conference yesterday with Tyler Adams and the questions that were directed at him and Berhalter. Um, can you kind of speak more about like how much pressure that did put on the team, especially in that first match against England? Cause that's, I think that's a really interesting point to make. Yeah. Uh, you know, watching that first game against England, I was disappointed, but I wasn't surprised because of the amount of pressure that was mm -hmm. put on the players, uh, to perform, to say something, to not play, to wear a shirt under your Jersey, to do this, do that. There's already enough pressure, uh, in regular games. But at the World Cup, there's a lot of pressure because everybody's watching. And then to add all that extra pressure, like, man, it's it's just – there you go. Sorry. Uh, it's just – it's too much. Yeah. It's too much. And we didn't see uh, – I didn't see a soul in those bodies. They were just running around. There was mm. no life there. It was – the mind wasn't there. It was just the bodies you saw. And, it, you know, it's unfortunate because it's – Oh, boy. Uh, you're a little behind, huh, Charlie? Yeah, <laughs> just a little. Just a little. Uh, I paused because, uh, yeah, he was he was going down. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's just it was just too much, and it and you saw the first game they didn't sing the national anthem, yeah. And the government comes in and tells them, "Hey, you guys better sing the national anthem, otherwise you're not playing the next game, or we're taking you out of here." Uh, so it's a it's a tough place, you know. I think we're fortunate. Uh, growing up in the U S where if we want to protest, we can protest. We can do that. If they protest over there, if they say something, they mm -hmm. get thrown in jail, mm -hmm. potentially executed. You know, how, how do you do something when, when those are the ramifications? And so it's tough. Uh, the second game, you did see them kind of sing the national anthem. And yeah. I, I think, I don't know what Carlos said, but I think it was to the tone of let's just play Let's not worry about anything. Maybe turn off all your phones, turn off, turn off all social media. Yeah. And let's just, let's be who we are and let's just play and people will get behind us. And then, then we could talk afterwards if we want to. So mm -hmm. uh, complete different teams, the first game against England and Wales. So I'm, I'm curious to see which team we see uh, against the U S yeah, it's a lot. And I, I loved a point that you made too um, in our pre-production meeting about, you know, how, if you're on continue in the, in the tournament, you know, another positive of that would be that we continue to have this conversation. We continue to talk about it and, and shed light on it. And cause you, you know, you said the Iranian people, like these are beautiful people, you know, like it's, it's, yeah. it's getting, um, it gets so politicized and, and people get so clouded by all of the noise. And so I think it's really important, especially with a world cup to remind people that, you know, these are, this is a really what, these are wonderful people. This is this is a country that should be proud, um, and it's just unfortunate that this is the the world we live in right now. Yeah, yeah, it's it's too bad, and it was too bad about that reporter who apparently uh, it's part of the a state run 
agency, uh, news agency. And so they mm -hmm. sent him over there to, to ask that question to Tyler. I thought it was so silly the way he asked it. Um, because it was very aggressive. I was, it was very aggressive. <laughs> and that's a, it really was. And Tyler was answered it perfectly. But I don't want people thinking that's how the Iranian people are. Exactly. That's not. That was a government, you know, official sending someone from their own agency to, to you know, uh, rile people up. And mm -hmm. thankfully, Adams didn't. He was calm and uh, he, he answered it perfectly. And Thank same you. with the question with Greg Berhalter. I thought he did a great job. They tried to say something about what Klinsman said. And, you know, it's just... I don't know why they did that, but I was I was a little bugged by it. Yeah, Here's no, little, thank you, thank you for for speaking on that and um, and sharing that because I think it's important for people to recognize. Um, okay, yeah. I don't know where y'all are at. I'm at 450 in this Same. game. Yeah, you're okay. 20 seconds ahead of me. <laughs> Charlie, Char Charlie, push, push live, Charlie, push live. Yeah, push that little live button. Push the I live did. button. See where you. Oh, ma'am. Okay. Okay. I'm just curious well, how how you think the for the first five minutes have gone, Chuck, when you get to five minutes um, for the U.S. <laughs> the, the the U.S. haven't settled down yet, so okay. they're still they're still in that first mode of we have all this energy and ambition, yet we have to calm our nerves. So they're still trying to to deal with that that pressure of of putting in a. In a a performance worthy of, of winning mm -hmm. and while iran seems like they're they're like hey let's let's go we we know who we are we're we're playing with with you know th this confidence completely drastic drastically changed difference from from the england game so it, it just seems like they're they're playing they're in this they're, there's a certain concentration level that iran are playing with right now they look they look focused mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i'm surprised they're kind of pressing so far up there mm -hmm. you go they scooted back a little bit but uh yeah you just don't want to give extra space to the attackers for the u.s if you're iran so i'm a little surprised by that but to charlie's point you know they're confident right now yeah they're, they're taking that momentum they're playing i mean coming in. they're playing to win i mean this is a thing a win and, yeah. and they're in you know like you True. you, you want to control your own destiny and this is uh it's all, <laughs> this is it mm -hmm. this and, is and it you don't want to get caught sitting back exactly and doing what you did against england which is just inviting them into your hat and allowing them to just keep keep trying to find those gaps find those openings even though mm -hmm. everyone's defending you're, you're still giving them the opportunity to to find that opening as opposed to oh let's let's push them back oof um, just a reminder, everyone, we have the live standings up on the left-hand side of your screen. So that will continue to update uh, depending on how the game goes. So um, just know that those are live. That is how it looks um, as it stands right now in Group B. Um, and also, I've got the um, the YouTube and the Twitch chat up right now. So if you guys have questions, comments, please um, get those in. We've got Urias Tosh watching from Columbia. Hello, Urias. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. Um, that's very cool. Oh, we've got we have a French a French guy cheering for the United States. Wow, that's great. Um, and Charlie, can you answer this question for Xander Helms? I know you explained it a little bit when you were going through the um, the lineups, but he wants to know why Zimmerman isn't playing. So can you kind of yes, give I, the I, rationale? I believe the reason is because Zimmerman is is not as good with the ball at his feet and so in this game if you expect iran to give you the center backs time to to build on the back you don't want to be one dimensional only having tim ream be able to play forward and and try and play through the lines and or play long diagonals so if you feel that he's lacking confidence which i think it, it's clear to see that he he defers to tim ream whenever they're building out of the back that you say all right to prevent iran from just saying guys, we're just going to press Zimmerman. We're going to force everything to Zimmerman and, and take Tim, Tim Ream away. You you try and balance it out and say, okay, we have a guy who we feel can build out of the back and is a little bit more confident with the ball at his feet. Love it. Thanks for that. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, tell me something good happened. You're just going to have to wait and watch. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, I just saw the punch from the keeper. Yeah, that, right that's here. A, why, why wouldn't he catch that? 
It was a bit of traffic. Maybe he oh. thought he was going to get bubbled. He's, he's watching the ball. <laughs> he was watching the ball. <laughs> nothing, nothing makes me – well, there's a couple of things that make me really mad. But in a match, when your keeper comes out and can clearly catch it but yeah. opts to punch, and you're like, what are you doing? <laughs> Just catch the ball. You can, If you can get two hands to it and it's not cut, steaming hot, catch the ball. Yeah, I agree. Or I mean, what defender? Punch I'm sure, it I'm sure so you're, far. You're looking like yeah. uh, we don't want them to come right back at yeah. us. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's a little nervous. It's still early in the game. He didn't play last game. Hey, foul. Yeah, see, I'm surprised, Susanna, right now, how high Iran is setting up. Mm -hmm. They are like that forward young. is in the box uh -huh. of the U.S. Uh, uh -huh. team. That's that's pretty surprising. I love it. Okay. Oh, hey, ha, ha. Man. Good cover. Um, guys, we are going to bring in our uh, our fourth team member today. Ooh. Always such a pleasure to have Christina Uncle in the house to answer all of our Good very sergeant. important um, refereeing questions. Christina, welcome. Um, what can you tell us about the, uh, the the guys that are refereeing this match today? What can we expect to see? What kind of match are they going to call? Yeah, no, I mean, I really like this assignment. Um, it's Spanish referee Antonio Mateo Laos. Um, he, I, I get to, I get to watch him have for the past three years, uh, watching in Champions League, and this was the UEFA Championship final referee in 2021, uh, when it was Man City versus Chelsea. And although some people have defined his refereeing Ooh. style and mannerisms as quirky, I would probably agree with that. Quirky. But yes, you'll you'll see, it, you'll see. It's just ah! movements that kind I of like fun a little stuff. quirk. But this is like the dorky side of us refereeing, right? We look at style. Um, but what I <laughs> reason I like this is because he is a player's referee, meaning he likes to manage the players as much as possible before issuing yellow cards. Not saying he's going to ignore 100% misconduct, but he understands the stakes of this game, um, not just on the field, but externally outside of the field from cultural issues. But also the yellow card accumulation is something not to be forgotten in these games and is not lost on the refereeing team. Two yellow cards – and then they have to set out a game that does not reset until semifinals. Ooh. So, right. We have lots of people on this oh, field man. with yellow card accumulation, you know, zone, which is only two yellow cards, which is easy to get. Yep. Um, so it's a good assignment because he's going to manage the heck out okay. of this game to ensure it. Oh man. So I'm just looking at this list. Now we've got Dest, Reem, McKinney, um, Acosta all on one yellow. So if they got a yellow, Christina, they would be out for the first game of the knockout rounds. If they were, they to would advance. be they would correct. Be Mm -hmm. Woo! That affects but, things. It is, but you can't say we haven't gotten some of the best referees on some of these uh, USA games. They've been top UEFA referees at a referee championship finals, mm -hmm. um, and have this is his second World Cup, so he's very seasoned, and he's going to referee the game as he knows how to referee the game without you know making some of these more inconsistent calls that we've seen mm -hmm. through this tournament. Awesome, great stuff, Christina. Thank you so much. I'm sure we'll be seeing you and chatting with you very shortly. Thanks. I think it's interesting though, like guys, like, you know, for a, a guy like Weston McKenney, who Charlie, you went on about like how important he will be in a game like this and moving forward mm -hmm. with the knockouts. Like, you know, if you're on a yellow, like, how do you, how does Greg Berhalter manage that? Like, you know, how careful you, do you have to be? You don't. I mean, you, you just you, say, you, you say play, play your, your game. game. But with that being said, you, you make sure you stay away from like the silly yellow cards. Yeah. If you're going in for a challenge, you're going in for a challenge. Mm -hmm. Be smart. Typically, you're only going in for a challenge if you're winning, gonna or you feel like you're gonna win the ball. But in terms of like those silly yellow cards that are avoidable, those mm -hmm. are the ones that you, you can't do when you're sit when you know you're you're on a yellow card. So, I, I I think they they just have to play play the same way that they always do: intense, aggressive, but smart. Smart, smart being the operative word. Smart, smart. Oh, Beta, I know you said you weren't really sure how you were going to be feeling. Do you feel your, um, you know, your allegiance swinging one way 
are the other right now. We're like 14 minutes in to this one. Like, do you feel like your heart is is leading you in one particular direction yet? Are you still on the fence? <laughs> uh, a, a little bit. <laughs> uh, you know, it's funny. I didn't know. Obviously, I, I I'm rooting. For, I root for them both, so it's tough. When I know other, it's tough. With all the messages that I'm getting, I feel like I'm kind of getting defensive, <laughs> and like I have to prove that Iran is good. Yes. I don't know if that makes sense. Uh, just because people uh, they don't talk smack about Iran, but they just talk a little poorly, and I'm mm -hmm. like, come on, man. Yeah. Uh, the people of Iran are beautiful people. Mm -hmm. The players. They're good. A yep. lot of them play in Europe, um, and I just don't think they get credit. So part of me does feel like I'm leaning a little that way. Okay. I think that's 100% fair. Um, can you We'll see also... what Twitter thinks afterwards. Oh, God. You know what? Sometimes I just, you know, you just got to put Twitter down. and Yeah. It... <laughs> it's, yep. it's, it's a wild, wild place to there be and exist. Um, yeah. And unfortunately, I'm like, it's sort of part of my job to – to be active on this, but boy, do I yeah. wish I could just mute the whole thing sometimes. Drives me nuts. Um, can uh -huh. you, you said something interesting and I can't remember if this was, uh, I think this was in before we started, but um, can you talk about how um, Iran approaches set pieces? Cause you said this was something that um, they take pride in like their, their ability to, to be successful on, on set pieces. Why is that? Yeah, uh, they have big guys as as it is, uh, but they're fearless. Mm -hmm. So set pieces, you you have to be fearless. Just that mindset of, I don't care if I win this ball or not, I'm going to hit something and that's either the ball or someone's head. And that's, it's crazy to say that, but man, these guys, when they go up for headers, oh, there's a chance. Um, yeah, they're, they're just fearless. They go up, their timing is great. They mm -hmm. get power behind the ball. So uh, I know Sa uh, Osmond is very good in the air. He's a pretty big guy. Tarmi is a big guy as well, good in the air. Um, but they're they're good on set pieces. It was a it was a big reason. Gosh. It's actually the reason I didn't start that first game in 2014 in Brazil. Yeah. And then you know, oh, Oof. wow. Um, and the coach the coach told me he's like, look, we're gonna put a center back at the right back spot, um, but you're gonna play the next game against mm -hmm. Argentina. So, so I knew that and. That's just one of those things that, you know, we were worried about Nigeria, which was our first game in 2014, oh. set pieces. And so, um, but yeah, Iran's very good at set pieces. And, uh, you know, who knows if we'll see yeah, something no. today on, on the corner. Woo-wee. Yeah. Chuck, you okay? Uh, yes. Um, I'm, <laughs> I feel like a goal is coming just uh -huh. because of, of – how eager the us are to to throw numbers in the box mm -hmm. which is great to see they had three runners in the box we weren't seeing that before in the past so they're committed to get in the box at the same time because they're committing so many numbers forward mm -hmm. it's leaving openings for for iran so if iran is clean on, on in the transition game and, and can mm -hmm. counter the, the opportunities are going to be there for them as well so i feel like a goal is is bound to happen in in the next I'd say 20 minutes. Okay. 15, 15 yeah. minutes. Char Charlie, first five, you said U.S. looked a little nervous. Yeah. Do you do you change your mind a little bit? Because it looks like they've had a few semi chances. Do you think uh, they look better now? Yeah, they've set. They've definitely settled. Um, settled down. They, they've calmed the nerves, and because now you can see they're generating possession. Mm -hmm. They're they're moving, passing, yeah. moving. Guys are guys are flying at the moment. Yep. Yeah. Oh. Oh, good ball. Great ball. I like Robinson. I think he's really good. He's Doesn't get enough credit. Yeah. Oh, as he turns it over, but it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> we jinxed him. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is the commentator's curse. Do I have that right now? Do I have that power? <laughs> hey, hey, welcome. <laughs> welcome to our world. It's a real, it's a real thing. It's the worst. The it honestly, curse. it happens to me all yeah. the time. Charlie, what have you uh, what have you thought of Cameron Carter Vickers' performance so far? Uh, solid. Yeah. I, I look at the the ball that he won right at uh, the the start of the thirteenth minute. It was a ball into the feet of Taremi, and he came in and and cut it out, won the ball mm -hmm. back for the team. So that just showed, okay, you know, that's something that you would expect Walker Zimmerman to do. 
Mm-hmm. And 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 you don't overplay it or overcommit or give up that foul, and he didn't. And so, um, just with that in, it being probably the biggest moment for him so far, so far so good. And it's and U.S. has gone to again back to that four four two with Sergeant and Wea mm-hmm. as the two strikers. This time, Weston McKinney's in the middle. So he's playing central with Tyler Adams, and, and now Yunus Musa is that mm-hmm. right midfielder um, where they, those roles were swapped against England. Well, they had Robinson if they could play him behind. Oh, it's a good look. Good interception on that one, though. Stephen, how do you think um, Iran are managing sort of, you know, U.S. kind oh. of playing themselves into this? Ooh. Sorry, Tarmi. No, I know. Good interception. Who is that? Reem? Good play. I, Reem's another one that didn't get enough credit till the last couple of months. He's been a phenomenal uh, career. Mm-hmm. I I have I have been a, kind of a Tim Reem um, hater for a long time, and I have been eating You've my been words. You've been one of the many. I, yeah, and I, <laughs> I, I've been eating my words this tournament. Yeah, he's one of the few in my draft class that are still playing. I don't know how many are still playing, but we were both 2010, so I'm a fan of Reem. Mm -hmm. Good player. It's been very solid. Yeah, that's a good ball. Sorry, Susanna, you... Oh you yeah, what did I ask? I, I did ask the it. question. <laughs> I'm like, did I? Yes, I did. Um, when, when oh, the no, ball goes out of the box. How do you think? How do you think Iran are are handling kind of this like U.S. pressure that they've now that the U.S. have kind of like found their footing of playing themselves into this game? How do you think they're dealing with uh, with what's coming at them? Uh, I don't think they're handling it handling it too great actually okay. because they're still exposing themselves a little too much as far as where they're pressing. Um, um, you know, now that you know, now that I mentioned, really mentioned uh, U.S. looks settled, settled into the game first time was a little nervous for them. Uh, I think Iran might have to just pull the forwards back a little bit mm-hmm. just to be more condensed um, because you know I know they're not great chances the U.S. are getting, but the opportunity has been there. Um, so we'll see if they adjust a little bit or if they continue to step up like they have been. Yeah, so like right here, you see Oswin where he's starting to back up. You know, he's top of the center circle, which is a little better. They're not really putting pressure on the center backs at all. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a good ball by Reem. It is. <laughs> it makes me nervous. I'm like, why is he up there? <laughs> yeah. But the U.S. has but to be I, careful, right? I know. This is what Iran wants. They want the exactly. They want the center backs. And this to get is where this is where I get nervous. And, this is where I think it can be super problematic yeah. for the U.S. But oh, nice job, good job, nice. good job. And and it and it's that way because both Reem and Kamakar Vickers lack the pace to keep up with both uh, of the Iranian strikers. So mm-hmm. it play it plays right into their uh, hopes of of counterattacking and and getting in behind uh, the U.S. back yeah. line. But it, it, so far, so so good. I mean, yeah, yeah, I think, Charlie. I think Greg, I think Greg would be happy with the start of this first half. I mean, okay, twenty-two min- minutes in. What have they done well? Offer options in the attacking okay. half, different runs. Um, they're winning the ball back. They're not forcing things. I just feel it, it again. The being clean in the, the final third, whipped in right balls, but no one's getting on to them. So. It's got to be a little bit hard, uh, better commitment to get into that six yard box to make that flashing run across the near post. So the ball is never going to miss in front of you, only behind you. Okay, corner. A little, kick. A, little t- a little tug by Mohammadi. Mm-hmm. Don't know if they'll call it, but it's got to be careful there in the box. Mm-hmm. No, I wouldn't call that. Christina, that's not enough. She knows. <laughs> I, I'm. 
I said I wouldn't Christina, call it. He Christina's shaking careful. her head. Yeah, He's like, nah. No way. No way. Yeah. <laughs> Charlie, as a forward, which which uh, team would you rather be playing forward for? Ooh. Uh, Iran, where U.S. is high up and you can counter and you have all that mm-hmm. space to run. And I know you're fast. So would you prefer that? Or in the U.S., where it's pretty crowded, you don't have much room to work? Uh, as a forward, what's your what's your take on that? I, I loved when um, teams pressed you because they had that all that space in behind. So yeah. you just had to be tactically smart. I always knew I could play off the back shoulder of the defensive midfielder. And then as soon as we win the ball, take off into a channel and, and then I'd have all that space. No one's catching you. Yeah. yeah. And th- in this game, because um, you have all the pressure to score, it, it's it's very difficult as a nine to, to get involved. Um, yeah. Uh, which I, I'm also impressed because Josh Sargent in the 14th minute make, made a good diagonal run in behind. When the ball played, he brought it down. And unfortunately, his second touch went a little too too far. So he had to just play a hopeful cross that went to the back post and didn't, didn't nothing came from it. But it's really hard to to get the ball in, in when a team is, is playing such a low block and, and the space is so tight. So you're just hoping that you just keep making that run Mm-hmm. You know, you, you basically can run blindfolded and just make those runs and you're trying to pull defenders out. It's like decoy runs all day yeah. in the defensive pressure. So it's not a glamorous uh, role when when you're a nine in a playing against a team that's just focused on um, defending in a low block. Mm. Yeah. I had a feeling you'd say that. So you'd want to be Osmond right now just – Licking your chops, waiting for the for Iran to get the ball and run around the corner. Well, with that being said, <laughs> if if you're playing against Spain or oh, you know ball. Argentina, Spain. Brazil, where you're not touching the ball, th- because uh, yeah. good point. I, I would rather not be in that position because you're just chasing sure. constantly. Yeah. Um, yeah. And in this game, in this, this game, game. I, would, yeah. I would I would probably rather be in. in the Iranian situation. Yeah. As a striker. Corner. Corner. There's a corner. Let's see. Sergeant no, Thomas no Zimmerman. <sighs> Somebody get your head on it. Just clear the first defender on this corner. Mm. Nope. <laughs> Sorry. Nope. Uh, <laughs> Okay. Um, how, can I, how am I so far back? I don't get it. I don't know. But can I I have been so underwhelmed by Pulisic's um corner corners so far this tournament. It, yeah, it was better last game than than uh mm, marginally than Wales. Marginally. I know it's not that easy, but it is a pet peeve, like you said, Charlie, earlier when the goalkeeper punches it rather than holding it. Mm-hmm. On corner kicks, when they hit it to the first guy, it's like, oh, oh. Well, <laughs> whose chance? <laughs> whose chance? Tim, Timmy had, I think that was Timmy had a, was I he don't on? know if he was on or off. I don't know. I think he, he might've been off, but let's see. Let's oh, see. The ball, ball in. Oh, he, I think he was on. He's on. Yeah. Oh, oh gosh. <sighs> <laughs> I kind of, I kind of like that. Like we're ahead of Charlie because can you imagine if he was ahead of us? Oh my god! Like, like, Very like, true. What is going he's on? on? He's on. Oh, he's on. He didn't know he had that much time. Mm-hmm. That's a, it's a weird one. The ball kind of went straight up. You can't generate any power like that, though. And, and the reason one. why he went up like that is because the keeper did take two steps. So yeah. he thought he was yeah. coming. Oh yeah. god! Look at the final have, final third entries at this point. Twenty-one to we five. We haven't. We haven't seen an Ali Reza throw yet, but this guy can launch the ball, yes. by the way. Yes, didn't he Just set a wait. record? Wait, what was that? Yeah. 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 He can launch it on a throw, not a kick. He will Which... just straight up football 70-yard throw. God. <laughs> it's amazing. Maybe the Chicago So he Bears prefers to throw than kick. Uh, if there's a counterattack on, uh, opportunity, he won't kick it. He will throw it. Oh, that might be a foul. No. Mm-hmm. It'll be interesting to see Rezaion, the right back for Iran, 
is more attack minded for his club team. He plays winger forward. Um, in the last game, he didn't play the first game. Mm-hmm. In the last game, he just attacked, attacked, attacked. Uh, and so it'll be interesting to see how he does against Pulsic because, you know, Pulsic is phenomenal. 1v1 uh, can take on anybody. He's he's done that in the Prem week in, week out. So uh, that'll be an interesting matchup for me. Oh. Oh. Just noise. Dest, Dest and Rezaion, very similar. Okay. Just, they like to attack. I don't. I would not consider them uh, good defenders, mm-hmm. but very, very good uh, attackers. So. Oh, Timmy. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> eh. He saw the pressure behind him. He just <laughs> put it out to safety. That's all. Good. Good move, Timmy. <laughs> Um, on the topic of uh, Sergino Dest, um, the chat wants us to to discuss um, the, his tournament, and the consensus from the chat is that he's ha- he's played very well. What do you what do you think? How would you assess it, Charlie? Yes. Yeah. I'd say he's impressed defensively. I think he's he's shown. Well, and that that's he, the knock on him, play. right? Yes. Everyone's like he's great. He doesn't play defense. With that being said, though, I don't think we've seen his the capabilities of him as an attacking right back which which okay you know if you're mm-hmm. give and take i'd rather him be more sound uh, as a defender because that's what your first responsibility is as a right back yeah but i think he can take a whole another level in terms of of being influential in the attacking uh third mm-hmm. but I, i'm i'm pleased with his defensive efforts so far that's for sure he this is the best he's played as a right back defending uh, in a U.S. Men's National Team shirt. What happened to Nur Allahi? He just, oh, his knee buckle? Or just knocked the wind out of him? Oh, I don't know. That was Ooh. awkward. I don't you. know what happened, but he looked like he was it looks in like, some discomfort. Uh, yeah. Well, he's got all that heavy tape, right? Yeah, I don't know if that's for his knee or for his quad. His quad, that's, yeah. It looks like it's a lot of tape. his knee. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Well, they're, they're, they're doing his left leg, not the taped leg. Left leg? And it's around the knee. Could have been one of those instances grabbed. where the, the, the Cameron Carter-Vickers knee Made contact yeah. with uh-huh. his quad slash knee. Maybe, yeah, a little dead leg or something. Mm-hmm. A Charlie horse. A uh, <laughs> Charlie horse. <laughs> I'm also, I am so uh, pleased that uh, Matt Turner is wearing the yellow kit because that orange flesh toned, whatever that was, not my favorite. Not my favorite, guys. I know that's very important and matters, but. Hated it. Uh, good banter from the referee there. Thirty minutes in. Whew. Not not. I not thought we'd have a chances, goal. I thought we'd have a goal so? at this point. Yeah. yeah, I really thought we were going to see an early goal in this uh, in this one. Alas, it's kind, once again, it's kind of what I expected so far, though. Is it? Mm-hmm. U.S. to have more possession. Again, these are half decent chances. Nothing like, you know, nothing uh, crazy, the way but... up. The way a one is a little bit more than a half decent. Uh, right. Well, just wait. if he brings it down, yes, but like that's a tough one to get generate power. The ball went straight up. Like mm-hmm. that's a tough Whoa. one unless you're volleying it or something mm-hmm. or bringing it down. So I don't, you know, it's a comfortable save in the end. I don't think it's been a a real good chance but definitely some some chances for for us when i was watching Maybe the we'll... um the group a matches they were talking about um the us in the halftime show and we've only had two shots on goal the whole turn tournament is that can that be true, that true? It, it, it unfortunately can be true like i was like what what yeah <laughs> what? Oh, how that's that's silky from golazada you just Saw that, Charlie. Oof. He's good, man. 
this is the thing people don't realize the Iranian players a lot of them don't play in Iran they play in Europe they play in other countries uh and they're they're good mm. where maybe some of the other Middle Eastern countries a lot of those players play in their foreign country but Iran for the most part their players are in Europe and Germany Denmark Sweden Belgium England you know so mm -hmm. they got they got some talented players uh, Jenna L in the YouTube chat says the beta fan club is watching and says, hi. What's up, Jenna? What's up, Jenna? Just look at all these people loving on beta. That, that was one of the cleanest Megs I've seen in a long was... time. Oh my God. <laughs> he said, Whoop. Was... He's a baller. I like the way he plays. I I don't know him personally, and he didn't start that first game against England, but I was an instant fan watching him play against Wales. Mm -hmm. uh, man, this this guy looked so good. He got a goal called back against Wales, where uh, Wales had the ball on the far side of the right, and he's on the he's on the left side, and he's kind of spying. And when they played it through, he started the counterattack, and he ended up finishing it, but it was barely off sides. Uh, he had a shot that hit the post, was upper 90 from outside the box. Just a beautiful Messi-esque curler. Uh, he's he's good, man. I like mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a question in the Twitch chat from Market Zero. He says, USA look like they have a goal in them, but does the push for the goal leave them overexposed at the back? That is the big question I have. Charlie, I'll let you answer that for Market Zero. Market Zero, I would say that's the 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 price you pay in in chasing chasing the game you, you need a goal so mm -hmm. it, it's always like towing the line how how many is the right number to attack to throw forward i think so far they they they've they've found the balance but ultimately if there is that one poor square ball square pass that could be the game mhm mm ah Mrs. Massey's class watching from Mesquite, Texas. That is a great teacher. She's got the game up in her classroom, allowing students to watch this. Um, we appreciate you, Deborah Massey. Thank you for being amazing. We love our teachers. You're the best. That's awesome. Where was that? Where was that teacher in, in my, my childhood? <laughs> right? I mean, nowadays with cell phones, you know everyone's streaming it anyway, so might as well. Maybe not that age, but high school if for you're sure. A teacher, if you're a teacher, <laughs> middle school, high school, you might as well just put it on. <laughs> it's um, a big game. It is. This is huge. Big game. It's you know, there's historical significance here as well. So I feel like it's entirely reasonable for a teacher yeah. to show this in their yeah. class. Now I'm curious when Greg goes goes to the bench. Oh. Okay. You're already thinking about that, huh, Charlie? Yeah, you have to. Yeah. You, you need to start thinking about what what is that because you need to give the substitutes time to also get into the game. And in terms of a low block and defender, yeah. you need people who are creative. Brendan Probably, would be great I, for that. If 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 I'm thinking, I'm like, Gio Reyna is probably the perfect player in this game. It, it's not a lot of of open space and running, and, and that's mm -hmm. where he thrives. He, he's not yeah. a, he's not a track runner, whereas Brendan Aronson, he he's constantly buzzing around, he's moving, but in low blocks, I think it's not as it's not as easy. He's he's better when the game's always open in transition. Uh -oh. oh God, why are you oh, saying God. that? He made a face. What is it? Just, I don't just know. Wait. I don't yeah. know. What is it? What is it? What is it? You're gonna see. You're gonna see. I see Tyler Adams. He plays to Weston. Long switch. Desk to the back post. Header across. <laughs> Christian. Yes. Yes. Let's go. And it's good you're delayed because oh, your reaction. Man. See, I didn't. I didn't give anything away. I was respectful. Yo, yo, I oh, let you I enjoy it. He's happen. also. Let's he's go. also. Is he still oh, down though? Is he yes. still down? He's fine. He's, He's fine. Okay. A, a little wind knocked out of him. Okay. <laughs> but, like, oh, God. Man. What a but, switch from Weston. Wow. Good timing. Yep. It's on. Yep. He's on. Don't even look uh, at it. 
And then the header across. Christian it's a real good ball box. by its ass. Let's go. All righty. All righty. Here we go. Hey, look at those Big live standings, everyone. Livened up. Look at those live standings. Oh, oh boy. Oh, baby. What do we got in the other game? Oh, baby. Yeah, it's 0 0 still, the other game. So, as it is right now, England and U.S. moving on. Are through. Yeah. Again, those are live standings, y'all, um, on the left hand side of your screen. Oh, boy. Oh, Let's my go! goodness. That's a phenomenal ball to Dest and yep. that header from Dest across the six. Who sent that ball it's, over to Dest? Who was that? I don't know. Who was that? Yeah, it was Weston McKinney. It was McKinney. Was it McKinney? Tyler played a, a square pass to Weston. Weston took a touch and boom, pinged it over to Dest. Dest one touch header across. Let's go. Still down. Let's go. Let's go. Let's He's go. Fine. States, 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 states. <laughs> he wants to make sure the viewers have. He wants to make sure replays. you have. And they show every time. angle. <laughs> God, how much? How oh, much man. extra time? I think, that's, I think that's good for this game because now Iran's going to open up and yeah. start playing. Okay. Because okay. 40 minutes, almost 40 minutes in, uh, I think U.S. has looked like the better team. Mm -hmm. uh, they've had possession. They've had some pretty decent chances. Looked like for sure they're the better team. Yeah, they they were. They okay. were. They've looked like the better team, meaning they, they, <laughs> they are. This will make more of a competitive match. Now Iran can... Get into this game because they haven't they haven't been in this game. Mm -hmm. This is good. How does this uh, affect U.S. tactically, Charlie? Now that they've got they've gone you, up a goal, we learned from the first game. Mm -hmm. Continue to take it to Iran, especially if Iran do not make any changes, tactical changes. If they continue to play out the first half, which I think they will, I don't think they're going to make any drastic changes now. Mm -hmm. But in terms of the second half, if they do make substitutions, if they do change tactics, then you have to adjust. You don't continue to play the same way. Mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting to see what does Iran do? Does Carlos Quiroz make any substitutions? Yep. Does he does he change the 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 formations? Does he tell them, hey, we're playing a high line now and it's now we're pressing? So you you oh man, this this yeah. Christian doesn't Christian look, is Christian. I don't I think Christian's yeah. out. So he looks, he looks, there's anguish on his face. This does not look good. No, it does not. Oh. 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 I mean, sorry. Yeah, oh. I don't know what I'm missing. <laughs> Tough angle. Tough angle. But... Transition. Oh, a little chance. Where? Oh. Sergeant. No one there. Um, guys, we have a look. Um, I think we've got that goal we can bring up and kind of break it down. There it is. There it is. Mm. Charlie, run us through this. Yeah, so right here, it's that ball from Weston McKinney. What a ball. Well timed from Sarge, uh from Serginho Dest as well, because he's he he sees it. Now he's making the run because that's the initiation. He's saying, Hey, Weston, it's on, play right. me. Mm -hmm. But I also have to toe the line because I can't get ahead of myself. So he timed it perfectly. Mm -hmm. Weston's uh, put the perfect weight on the pass. And then it's making the decision to play it directly across time instead of taking it touch down, taking yeah. it to the chest. Or, mm -hmm. and, and Christian, this is what you need, commitment to get into the box. And it, the timing is phenomenal because he's arriving <laughs> exactly at the right time. The pass from Dest, it, it, it's just that's what you want from your team. And what a ball by McKinney, though, oh, to not, yes. not uh, the ball's coming across to me that Tyler played and he didn't take a touch. Mm -hmm. He hit that first time. That is incredibly difficult to do because if he takes a touch, Des is offsides as well. Mm -hmm. So the fact that he hit that first time, I think that was the hardest part of that entire play. But Des hits it across the six. Obviously, Pulisic has to finish. Uh, very, very, very good play by four very good players. Mm -hmm. Pulisic staying in. Uh, See how well he's moving. Tyler. See, I don't know. Ooh, yellow card for Tyler Adams. That's mm -hmm. not ideal. <laughs> Knowing what we know, again, a reminder, guys. Um, if you get a second yellow, that accumulation of two yellows does 
go into effect for the knockout rounds. So if you get two yellows, you will miss the first game of the knockout rounds. Oh. Oh boy. Yeah. Is that how, how checking in? How's everyone feeling? Steven, how do you, uh, how, well, how is, uh, Iran handling it now that they've got, they have, you know, they're down a goal. They need to score. Well, it's a two V one, two V two right now. So we'll see. Whew. Oh, wow. He had him. He had him a little bit in front of him. That's in. Mm. Oh, um, I don't think they're, they're handling it great. Oh mm -hmm. my Maybe God. Maybe halftime. Uh, they could kind of talk i almost there's only oh. maybe a couple minutes of extra time uh i'd almost just you know what get it to half don't give up a second you if gotta I'm finish there that 2v1 yeah but if if i'm the u.s i keep pushing right now mm -hmm. and try to get one more because they look uh you know a little disoriented right now mm -hmm. um the iran does so if i'm u.s i try to take advantage of this before halftime Charlie, what happened on this 2v1? They're re-showing it right now. I know you're a little behind, but um, what should have happened, I guess I should say. Once I get a chance to see this. So, okay. So the break, Tyler Adams, phenomenal to get out of that and and then plays it perfectly into the path of Sergeant. Sergeant 1v1 and the overlapping run from Tim Timothy Weah, I would have liked to see him get it out of his feet. The ball's a little bit behind him. And then this, that first touch from, from Timothy Weah, it wasn't in front of him because if mm -hmm. it's in front of him, he can take that next touch as a shot. Um, or, or you know, worst case scenario, it's a, it's a ball back across for, for Sargent. But because that, that touch doesn't get in front of him, he's forced to kind of try and play it to, to Sargent at, at, a, at a bad angle, which is obviously beneficial for the defender to reach it. Uh, th you just got to – you have to get a shot on goal in that, in that instance. But it's a good run. The whole the whole build up into that position into the box was fantastic. It's just that ball from Sargent was a, a tad behind him, and then his first touch wasn't wasn't great. Looks like Mohammedi, the left back, is down for Iran. Mm. I don't I don't know. He was trying to keep the ball in play, and he might have rolled an ankle or something. Oh, no. his, his foot planted funny. We'll see if they make a sub or if they kind of wait it out. Yeah, Weston, they might be making a sub. Yeah. Weston's, Weston's been great with his 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 passing, his distribution. Do they bring on a center back and put Hatch Safi to left back? Maybe go a 3-5-2? Let's see what Carlos does here. Okay, so Academy is coming in. Before the half. So he's, yeah. he's going to burn a substitution window. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Oh, man, that's not good. Yeah. I guess he, he felt he didn't want to play 10 men till the, till the halftime. Mm -hmm. For what? What is that? Three more well, minutes? Yeah. There's, yeah. Huh. Yeah, five minutes of stoppage time. Yeah. Who, who in your mind, oh. would come off the bench – to help Iran in this case, though, for for I mean, attacking options. For attacking, I really like Adreza Jahan Bash, but he's suspended for this match, two mm -hmm. yellows. Um, you know, Salman Godos is another one who is a very good attacker, but he hasn't played yet. So I don't know if he's in the doghouse or what's going on. Uh, mm -hmm. Obviously, I would start Tarmi. I would start Osman over him, but he's a very good very good player. Um, I believe he's still playing in Sweden. Uh, and he was the talk for, for, for team Ali for a while. So he hasn't played yet, but we'll, we'll see. I don't know who they're going to bring on to kind of spice and up that attack for them. But I think it's more so actually possession. They haven't really possessed the ball. They mm -hmm. haven't got a hold of it. 
I know uh, against Wales, Tarmi and Osmond were able to bring the ball down and lay it off to guys. But right now, they haven't been able to do that. Like the the flick-ons have gone to the U.S. The the layoffs haven't been accurate. So uh, for me, that's more so the issue. Uh, still scoreless in that Wales-England match. Uh, they are in stoppage time as well. So again, we have the live standings up there on the left as it is right now. It would be England and the U.S. going through to the knockouts. Um, yeah, this is wild. Wild. Wild, wild. stuff. Wild and that we're here right now. I know. And then we'll take a look um, at halftime. We'll take a look at the, uh, the bracket and how that will line up. And Group B will be taking on um, Group A, I believe which we now know it is uh, the Netherlands and Senegal that moved on in that one. So, yeah. There you go, we, we be ma- we, space. Oh. We'd be matched up against the Netherlands oh. right now. Mm-hmm. All right, Pul- Pulisic looks fine. He looks like he's moving well. Okay. That's good news. Sar- so- Sergeant has been fantastic in this first half. Really? Yeah. You think? He's, he's, okay. been, he's been fantastic with his, his movement. What has he done well? Movement, uh, first touches, just link up play because he's making runs into the box, getting on it, and then he's connecting passes. Mm-hmm. So he, he's been an option, const, constantly on the move and, and constantly being an option. So from that standpoint, because it has lacked, and guys are actually playing to him. I, I think in the Wales game, he did make those runs, those actions, but wasn't getting the ball. And then in some cases that most strikers always tend to do, if you're not getting the ball after so many runs, you just say, I'm not going to make that run anymore. Mm-hmm. And I think now they're, they're trusting. They're, they they have that trust for him, and he's uh, he's shown well so far. He's just battling. Well done. Yeah, so they didn't go to 3-5-2, but they did pull Hedgesafi back uh, into the left-back role. <laughs> and they put Heidi Kyrie into the midfield. So a little bit of a switch. Sorry, I was just laughing at my producer. That was not me no laughing worries. at you guys. <laughs> He's in. Guys! He's in. Guys! Guys! <laughs> oh! No. What's it's, he off. Off. it's off. It's off. What's it's he off. on it's about off. right it's now? Off. What's it's he off. on about? Okay, turn finish. it with the left oh. foot to McKinney. And... Uh, what a finish, though. Oh, God, it's off. Yeah, barely. No. Offside. No. That would have been good finish. <laughs> that would have been so Clean. so delicious. Oh, wait, he, is he on? No. No. Christina. <laughs> We're like no. that looked good. <laughs> He's not. He's not on. <laughs> He's off. I don't know. That was much closer. Sharpie you guys will will scene. that goal into existence. That was much closer than y'all made that scene. <laughs> that was in, that was like if he is oh. off, inches. I'm talking. Okay, I'm talking. okay. It's halftime now. Can we bring Christina on right now? Can we get her in? How did they not even give that like a real look? That was <laughs> super close to me. <laughs> I mean, Charlie, our angle was so far away. How are you going to say that was close? I love, I it's love. All oh, about Christina, angles. Christina, yeah. yes. tell so, me that wasn't close. Chuck, Charlie needs like clarification. My here. <laughs> it is offside, and so one thing I need everyone to know is the semi-automated offside technology drops those traditional blue and red lines automatically for the VAR and the offside VAR up in the booth, so they know instantly whether the person's on or off. What Charlie's really looking for, which everyone is, justifiably so, is that 3D graphic that yes, shows that kind of that body. Day. That takes three to five minutes to actually put together, and that's why it <laughs> takes that long to drop it in for the viewers, which I understand is very frustrating. But trust me, that red, oh, yellow, the red and blue lines are dropped. VAR has it. Offside VAR has it. Check complete. But you guys are going to get that graphic. Uh, yeah. You'll probably get the it was, graphic at halftime. It half was time. inches. No, he was actually off by quite a bit. I'm looking at the halftime show at Fox. Uh, (laughs) It wasn't a toenail, I can tell you that much. (laughs) More than a toenail. More than a toenail. (laughs) Oh, great stuff. Thank you. Thank you, Christina. Appreciate it. I I I know that's not what we wanted to hear. He was off by six inches. Not what we wanted to hear. 
listen, um, I, I'll, I'll take, well, I know S Steven's loyalties are, are up in the air, but I will take a, a one nil lead, um, heading into halftime in this Charlie, uh, let's You're go. You're damn skippy. You're yep. damn skippy. <laughs> I, I, I actually think it's win. good for this game. I think that's good <laughs> for this game. Yes, and Beta just wants a good game. Exactly. Yeah, um, so a here's game. a look. Here's a look at how we got to that that scoreline. And again, just um, mm -hmm. a really, really sensational buildup and goal. Um, Pulisic went down, but it seems to be fine. Charlie, what? Um, I mean, just tell everyone what you what you liked most about this this buildup and goal. Well, the distribution from Weston throughout the first half, he, he was he was clipping balls in, putting the mm -hmm. right pace, and it's the timing with start with Serginho Dest, um, knowing that that's the space to attack. He starts the run, which signals to Weston to play that ball, and it's easy to say, "Oh, this is where I'm going to play it," but to actually pull it off in front of uh, making sure that it's not and put too much uh, flight under it, so that the Iranian defender can get to it. So perfectly and then for Serginio Dest once you get into that that space to say this is exactly where the ball needs to go and then the third part of it is Christian Pulisic reading it from the very beginning mm -hmm. and you can see he he's once he sees that ball go over his head he takes off and then he he senses it you can feel that that ball's coming and it's fantastic from him to to get to that spot knowing Serginio Dest is going to lay it across first time and that's that's just what we haven't seen often from this team. So mm -hmm. we've seen Timothy Weyes runs from outside in, behind the back line, nearly got one. He was offside, um, did get it, obviously, against uh, Wales. And then now this, the only pe thing we're missing now is set pieces. Can we score off a corner? Can we score off the free kick? That will be uh, the moment where we feel like everything's clicking for this group. But fantastic first half. Fantastic. Whew. I expect Iran to completely change the way they played. Uh, it was too defensive for me. Again, okay. I thought, okay, they started the game off. They were playing pretty high. Then they dropped off drastically, and they allowed the U.S. to get into the game and control it. So it's got to be better mm -hmm. um, if Iran wants to try and make this a, a real match. Yeah, Beta, Charlie says uh, played too defensively. What are, you, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think the first five minutes uh... – Iran started off well, but then after that, they were just too defensive. Mm -hmm. They invited a lot of pressure. Um, a phenomenal goal by the U.S. Uh, I'm still amazed by that ball McKinney played over to Dest. Mm -hmm. To hit that first time, not it, like Charlie said, to, you know where you're supposed to hit it, but to actually hit it, not take a touch and set it up perfectly for yourself, he's just playing that first time from the ball that Adam oh. plays off to, which is so hard to do. Um, and then Pulisic run his – his soccer IQ, he pulls Rezaion out. Look where mm -hmm. he pulls him on this replay right now. Yep. Completely out and then beelines it to the six because he knows that's where Des is going to hit it. So I think that's where, uh, you know, Ramin was a little naive. You don't need to necessarily chase someone uh, into that space. You can always go close him down, but you're exploiting that space behind, which is more dangerous. And, you know, Pulisic is a fast player. You, mm -hmm. You're not going to catch up to him if he gets a little head start like that. So, um such a good, such a good goal. On so many parts from the U.S. Um, can we put up the uh, the bracket? I know people in the chat are like, "Hold your horses, we're getting ahead of ourselves now." But, 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 if we're looking at the live standings and it is England and U.S. that go through, this is what we're looking at for the uh, potential mm -hmm. first <laughs> first game of the knockout rounds. Oh, you know, just a casual, a casual matchup against the Netherlands, which. Um, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. What That's... day of the week is December 3rd, by the way? December 3rd. <laughs> let me get my let me get my cow out. It's Saturday. Oh, boy. Wow. Wow. Saturday. That means no excuses. I, nope. No one's in school. Like, you know, Mrs. Mm -hmm. Massey's class. We don't have to worry about her showing it to her to her kids everyone can can watch i mean that will that would be that's it's so hard i mean either senegal or netherlands is uh that's a, a really really tough matchup but oh my goodness i know we're getting ahead of it so everyone's yelling at me i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry just this is you know yeah i, I i'm gonna be one of those people too stop it <laughs> i know stop stop, stop the jinxing we're, we gotta see this through 
We saw what happened against Wales, where we I know. completely You're dominated right. the first half. We got the You're goal right. almost the same time. We had the graphic, and I just thought, you know, why no, not? No, don't do it. Don't do why it. Why not? It's I'm uh, yes, I, Anders, Anders said I can blame him. Sir, I'm, I'm looking at you, take, producer take Anders. It down. It's your fault. It's all your fault. <laughs> um, if we lose this, um, I love it, Mrs. Massey for the win from Doug B. Exactly, she's our MVP today. By the way, I love it. Um, okay, so let's talk about um, halftime adjustments, mm-hmm. changes for the U.S. Charlie, what do you what do you think Mm-mm. we might see for the next the the next forty five? You don't change a thing right okay. now. However. You don't get Zimmerman on? More defensive? You no. You're not going to have the no, ball as much? Hell no. no. Hell Leave it. no. You, you bring on Zimmerman if you're talking 80th minute, 85th <laughs> minute, and, and things start, are, you know, they're they're whipping in balls. You, you can tell we need an aerial presence, someone who is going to be maybe at the center of the back four um, or be a, probably a back five at that point. So you have camera card Vickers on one side, Reem on the other, on the left side, and then in the middle, uh, Zimmerman. But what I will say is if Iran come out and they're a little bit more proactive and aggressive, that's when you change from that 4-4-2, which we've seen, and, and the U.S. have had a ton of success, where now you say, all right, maybe we sit two instead of instead of Adams being the lone six. You say, mm-hmm. Weston, you and Tyler are playing in front of the back four. So we're going to shore up the foundation of, of the, the midfield. And then we bring Yunus Musa as a more central traditional number 10, probably playing in a more of an eight role. And then you have, you can have still Sergeant and, and way up top. And, yeah. and then you look, you look for those two to find the space in behind, because that's going to, you're going to have two options now to relieve pressure as okay. Iran continue to throw people and, they maybe go to a back three and they play those wing backs. That space on the outside corners are, is going to be wide open for for Sergeant and, and Wade to run into. Um, here's a question, Charlie, mm-hmm. and not to be a dead horse about the yellow card thing, but you know you do have a bunch of guys that are on mm-hmm. yellows right now. You have a one goal lead. Um, you know how does that does that change things? Does that no. factor in? Unfortunately, no, because tomorrow's never promised god so you can't take out your most important guy on the field uh-huh. in in tyler adams because he has yellow mm-hmm. because you if you let's just say you did mm-hmm. because you were afraid and you lose this game or you lose a, the midfield battle or you lose a player who can cover who he can literally cover for every single person on the field tactically just because he's that smart and intelligent he knows when to cover and he has the ability to do it you take him off you risk letting Iran du- now start to run the midfield and win the mm-hmm. second balls you can't do that because yeah. you lo- then you lose the game so you- you'd rather win this game and and if Tyler gets a second yellow at the end of the game whatever it is and and I yeah. and I don't anticipate that and progress without Tyler in the second round versus taking him out and lo- and and having a big chance of losing this this match. Hundred percent agree. Unless mm-hmm. the game is out of hand and they for sure know they're winning, yeah, like three, two, three, four, right. nothing. Yes. Mm-hmm. Then okay. But right now you can't take him out. You can't know? take him out. Char- can't Charlie's take him 100% out. Right. Yeah. Okay. So beta for Iran. You know what? What are they going to look like for the the next forty five minutes? Yeah, it, you know, it's going to be a complete change. They have to go for it now. Obviously, they're losing. Uh, I think they're going to try to do what Wales did to U.S. in the second half, where we saw a tale of two halves. Uh, U.S. dominated, and then they became a little bit more reserved, and then uh, Wales was a better team in the second half. So I kind of uh, expect something similar in this game. Uh, whether or not that's spoken about by the coaches – I think psychologically, that's just what happens as players on the field. Um, you know, you have a lead. You know, you're going through with this score line. Uh, it just—it's part of the game. It, it, it just happens. And mm-hmm. So Iran's going to push forward. They're going to have more possession. Um, but uh, like Charlie mentioned, now there is the potential that you are giving up the counterattack. So the mm-hmm. same same mindset U.S. had in the first half. Look, we're going to have the ball. We're going to have more chances. But there's the potential of the counterattack. It's completely the scripts are flipped. And so uh, I actually, I'm, I'm glad there is a goal. I hope there are more goals mm-hmm. and it just livens up uh, the game more. If, if it were zero, zero, it just wouldn't be as fun. And I just want an exciting game. 
Charlie, what is the most important thing for the U.S. to consider? Like the first 10 minutes of this second half, like what do they what do they have to come out and do to keep give, momentum? Give Iran zero space, mm -hmm. which Iran gave the U.S. After five minutes, I thought, oh, man, Iran are going to play like they're down and, and press and, and, and not give U.S. the time to build out of the back which could frustrate the U.S. And, and delay them from getting into the game. But mm -hmm. as soon as they dropped off, they allowed the U.S. to get comfortable and, and start connecting passes. And then that confidence grew. You can't allow that to happen for Iran in the, in the beginning of the second half. You can't drop off and say, oh, we're going to protect this lead and allow them to start getting that confidence and that momentum because that's when you're going to see Iran level the score. So you have to continue to play aggressive, close them down and then keep possession because when you keep possession the attacking half that, that nullifies all the tempo you're forcing them to to chase mm -hmm. you, you you don't allow them to settle and then when they do win it back they're just so fatigued from chasing you all the time and that's what needs to happen in, in the start of the second half no absolutely not drop off and give them the ball i love it Yes. Yes, exactly that. Um, guys, we have over 3,400 people watching this stream right now. Let's go. In stakes, actually stakes, incredible. Stakes, 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 stakes. Let's go. <laughs> I'm always like shocked. I'm like, are people watching? No, there are a bunch of people watching. So um, a huge, huge thank you to everybody that is tuning in and watching along with us. Also, a reminder that this is a watch along. So sometimes there's confusion. They're like, why aren't they showing the game? And I'm like, well, we can't. Um, cause we don't have the rights to do that, but you are watching along with us as we take it all in, um, with you. And then we are reacting. So that is how this all works, but we've got over 3,400 people and that is phenomenal. So thank I, you I, all. I will say though, that there's only one negative. What's that? And I don't want to count my chickens before they hatch. Let's but go. if the U S do go to the next round, yeah, I'm an indoor soccer coach for my boys um, team uh, uh -huh. and they play on Saturdays at 10 a.m. <laughs> so oh, Charlie, I, I'll be forfeit I'll... the match. No. Right. Forfeit the match. Exactly. It's a no brainer. Oh gosh. Chuck, I'll have to miss Chuck. that one. No, no, no. No. no, your kids are missing it too. You're pulling everybody. The whole team is coming to your house and you're all watching. Absolutely. The, this is, yeah, I that, that might line. be that might be the way to go, actually. actually. Yeah. yeah. I draw yeah. the line. Good team bonding. All right. Okay. Guys, Ooh, we're like going to we... forfeit the match. We've got we've got some subs, and I totally missed came it. On. Look who came on. Aronson like is big. on. Aronson is on. Um, Aronson for? For Pulisic. For Pulisic okay, is so, off. Yeah, Aronson he, on. He took a good knock, and he, and he just tried to c carry through. Yeah. Yeah. And Respect. there was a change for Iran. Looks like Salman Godos is on, okay. uh, who hasn't played yet. And I talked him up. I don't know why he hasn't played yet. He's a good player. Mm -hmm. uh, Karim and Saifad, I think, is the other player that if they need a goal, he'll come on pretty pretty soon. Uh, but it's good to see someone on because he's a very good player. I know he hasn't played yet, mm -hmm. but uh, I don't know who – did it say who he came on for yet? Do we know produced Osmoon? Osmoon. Oh, okay. So maybe fitness was an issue with Osmoon okay. because – he did have a bit of a calf issue coming in. Uh, he, he was cramping a few times against Wales. So, okay, that makes sense. All right, guys, uh, second half has kicked off. If you're trying to sync up with us, I am at 45-11 right now. Um, so, yeah, here we go. Oh, boy. I forgot my popcorn. Still stress eating. So what is um what does Aronson bring, Charlie? Because I know this is a guy that um you know we're super happy to to see in yes. there, but but how does how does him in this in this formation and lineup kind of change things for the US? Um what Aronson is great at is his his ability to press and counter press and trans transition moments because of his movement. He, he plays quick and he's constantly looking to get on the ball and to play forward, which which is obviously um, kind of the player you want in a, in a game like this because Iran are going to be pushing. They'll, they'll take chances, they'll take risks, and you could just see Aronson looking to find that space 
always looking to to try and and play uh progressive balls positive balls which is um a player that i'm happy to see on the pitch right now because you know he's committed he'll work both sides of the ball he, he he's constantly moving and oh I'm, I'm not surprised to see this already to start this game mm -hmm. balls in behind tim ream So again, if this result holds, guys, England would top Group B and U.S. would also move on, coming in second in that group, if this result holds. Again, we know, a lot of soccer left. I will not put that bracket up again until the very end. Thank you. <laughs> a nervy okay. moment from uh, Adiraza, the keeper for Iran. You know, pretty simple save and kind of hits off his leg. That was interesting. But again, Sergeant runs in behind, taking yeah. a, a low driven shot. It wasn't that much of a of a, a tester, Ooh. but the keeper. England, England's up one nothing, guys. Mm -hmm. Oh, Marcus Rashford. Rashford, yeah. So this, I mean, for a run like that, you've got a. The, England's up. Like this is this is go yeah. time. Exactly. This is go time. Leave it all out there. I was going to say, if, if this game were still 0-0 and England scored, mm -hmm. it'd be worse because then they'd really pack it. Yep. Uh, pack it in. But now this is, okay, this is mm -hmm. go time. Yep. They have to push you know forward. Exactly right now, US looks, U.S. looks good. Mm -hmm. they're, they're playing. Let's see at what moment they kind of play a little conservative. But right now, U.S. looks good. You can't. You you literally can't play conservative until till the end. You, yeah. You just you can't because that's when Iran starts to get those chances. I think they learned their lesson against Wales, where they were a little conservative in that second half. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll see. Obviously, it's only three minutes in, but <gasps> guys, two hard. nothing, two nothing, England. Oh wow. Okay, so that one's over. Uh, <laughs> done. Wales. Yeah. Woof. Wales. Wales is done. And who who got that second one for them? Um, do we know Rashford? Again, double. Kick. Wow. Oh no, I'm... that was the first one. Sorry, I'm oh, reading okay. the comments. We're we're getting there. It, 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 crazy that they didn't play Marcus Rashford for uh, more minutes against the Phil US. Foden. Phil Foden. Foden again. How did he not play? How did I US? know? Right. Yeah. That was wild. Wild decisions. You got to foul him there, Aronson. You have to take the yellow there. Also, guys, U.S. Soccer just tweeted out it was an abdominal injury for Christian Pulisic. Abdominal. Abdominal. Huh. It did kind. Of, it looked. I mean, you said it, Beta, that it looked like he got the wind knocked out of him. I don't know if he like. Yeah. It looks like he almost fell on the keeper's knee. Maybe I don't know. I don't know. Hopefully, it's not a broken rib. Maybe it's right? a bruise. Like obviously, anything hurts. But in the World Cup, uh, with the adrenaline. Mm hmm. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've I've heard of guys playing through punctured pancreas. So, oh, you, what? That doesn't sound ugh. smart. It, it, it wasn't smart, <laughs> nor was it fun. It was me. <laughs> so it you're was like, miserable. and that I'm saying it wasn't fun because that was me. I how'd you play yeah. through, how? How? How, you play how does one even do that? How'd, yeah. how'd that happen? And, and yeah, how, Tor what? Toronto, Toronto FC Canadian Championship. Uh, final against Montreal. It was like the last minute of the uh, first half and I was running down the line and I tried that move where you put the ball around the defender and go on the other side mm -hmm. and Fisher had different plans and just like a linebacker, like Brian Erlacher, his oh. shoulder right to my midsection. So full speed, full speed. Uh, you know, my my legs were way up in the air, just landing. I couldn't breathe for about 30 seconds. Oh, that the sounds awful. Doc the doctor said nothing was broken, so I was like, all right, I'll just play through this enormous amount of pain and uh, ended up having a punctured pancreas. Just, just, a, punch, just a punctured <laughs> pancreas. Yeah. NBD. Oh Gosh. Yeah. Yeah. How long Not were you out smart. after that? Uh, a few months. Oh. Yeah, it was, it was pretty bad. <laughs> and you played. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, That's... I played the whole second half. Uh, we won, so it was worth it. But what, what you play the second half, the game ends. At what point did you say I gotta I gotta go to the hospital? Well, Charlie, you know how it is after you win. We won the Canadian championship, so the whole team went out, and I'm not gonna. Oh, 
no. a chance. Chance for your run. Uh, I'm I'm not gonna not go celebrate with my my brothers, and so we all go out, and I was in so much pain. I was curled up. Uh, you know, we had a section in the back, and I was just curled up. And guys may have been giving me some drinks to be like, "Here, have mm -hmm. this shot; it'll help you." And probably wasn't the smartest thing to do, but we were celebrating, and uh, I didn't sleep a second that night. Oh. I went straight to the hospital, and sure enough, yeah, emergency surgery. Oh my god! Uh, right after that, yeah. But this is uh, these are the things you do for your team, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Just Whatever for the record, takes. we're not we don't endorse playing with a punctured no. pancreas not for all those all. children out there. Not at all. No. I was just thankful they didn't have to cut up my entire stomach. Uh there was a couple surgeries uh options and they ended up just putting a couple tubes. So Oh, Rashford. T T TMI, but Gosh. I'm just La thankful. laparoscopic. Yeah. What's going on? What happened? They're showing Rashford's on? free kick. Uh, Okay. Oh. oh, there you go. Incredible. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay. Oh, mm. my goodness. Goalkeeper side. Oh, my goodness. And without how good, Charlie, how good does it feel to strike a ball like that? I've never, I would never know, but. Oh, and then Phil Foden's back post. Good yep. Lord. Got The man's got to play. <laughs> Phil Foden's got to play. I don't know. What Gareth Southgate is thinking, but did I didn't look? Did he start Foden? Yes, he started. Mm -hmm. Foden and Rashford both started, so both started. Saka and Sterling I like, are on the bench. Yeah, like I, I, okay, Saka he deserves to play. He start. He's yeah. balling. Arsenal's top of the table, but yeah. Sterling hasn't been in good form. He hasn't been playing yeah. well, and mm -hmm. Phil Foden is playing for City. I mean, yeah, what? Yeah, agreed. Other one's Trent. He just doesn't like Trent, huh? He, does he doesn't not want like to play. Trent. No. Yeah. Oh. Sorry. Oh. When you give me the O, oh. sorry. I, I don't know if that's oh. good, a good O or bad O. <laughs> the O is like something could happen. Yeah. <laughs> and then the shock face is something happened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. I, I see the oh. O now because Serginho's in that running and not a oh. good ball. Oh. What happened? Oh, here? there's a lot of space in that transition. That's gotta be a card now. Yeah. Oh, well, maybe not. No. Hey, all right. It's nice of the referee. I know. Christina. Oh. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Yeah, it is a replay. Oh, mm. I know, I know, I know pro is, is a big on protecting goalkeepers. Uh, no, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm okay with that. He put his toe down. He's just trying to toe poke it. Studs were not. I'm okay yeah. with that. Okay. Well, I will say Tarmi could have gone down maybe a little bit when, uh, Carter Vicks kind of swung and missed at the ball. Mm. Agreed. Charlie, yeah. maybe embellish it a little bit, right? Could, could have easily done that. Could've. As you could see. Cameron Carter Vickers doesn't have the most pace. Yeah. That's a real weakness of his. Mm. So, so similar to the first half, out. do things kind of flip now? Uh, Iran started the first half well, and then U.S. took over. U.S. started the second half well, and Iran is starting to get into the game. What do you mm -hmm. think? Yeah. Are you surprised they took off Asmoon at halftime? It has to have been an injury yeah. because, for me, he's the best player player tarmy him are the best players especially if you need a goal it had to have been something with the calf uh was just bugging him right oh. I, I i felt he gave everything he had against wales and, and mm -hmm. emptied the tank and then yeah you know the, playing in this game was was hopeful yeah agreed Oof. all right looks like we have a corner Aronson, Aronson is um, has done mm -hmm. well with with set pieces. So, mm -hmm. a little, a little through the legs oh. here.
What do we think of this for a set piece? I like, I think, I Have mean, seen it? okay. Yeah. Another corner. Aronson's, yeah. To the Go back ahead. post. I trust Aronson more with his delivery than, mm -hmm. than Pulisic. Do you think he meant to hit it far post like that, or did he overhit it? Because last game, Zimmerman had a wide yes. open one. Uh, McGuire came in perfectly. McGuire ended up flicking it. Yeah. yeah. So I wonder if they tried to set that up. Well, it just, yeah. It seemed like that, on that every... one not, didn't look so much because usually when that happens, everyone crashes near yeah. for that to that pull off, and that was yeah. not just the overhit. case. Yeah. That's how it's like. Every corner, though, in that England match w looked like it was directed at McGuire. And I was like, can we just avoid him, please? Yeah. Can we not? He is a big target. He's a, <laughs> he's a large man. He is a large human being. How good is Waya? Mm. Oh, I that's two jinx. Sorry. Minus that. He's been very good. How big of a miss is it, though, for to not have a guy like Zimmerman out there on set pieces, you know, I, four I would, corners, that I mean, aerial For defensive threat. or attacking? For uh, uh, attacking. Well, I'd say nothing because nothing's come come from it. <laughs> so, you, you know, we've had two matches and it's not that he... It's not been a... No. It's, you're not going, oh, my God, he, mm -hmm. he's getting to everything. He's an absolute beast. He's a monster. Late game. Late game. It could come to that, though, Charlie. You just need, you know, you, just, yeah. you need a, a I'm, big I'm old say, body I'm, in there. I'm not I'm not saying it, it can't, but I'm, <laughs> as of now. Mm -mm. I think it could be for both both ends, defensively and offensively. We haven't seen it yet, Charlie, but, like, mm. you know, you don't expect to score every time or get on the end of it. It does draw the attention mm -hmm. of the opposition. So maybe it opens up someone else when you have someone like that. Uh, but but they're doing all right right now. I don't think mm -hmm. they need to make that change. I think Iran needs to do something to help themselves out. Because what are the what are the options there, Beta for Iran? Yeah, you know, you have some midfield options. You don't really have too many attacking options. Mm -hmm. It could be possibly a formation change. Um, you know, Golizade I think was fantastic last game. I haven't even seen him this game. So maybe do change something up, change a formation. Because um, Karim and Sarifad is, you know, the other attacking option that I like. But again, who do you who do you take out? Uh, it's just it hasn't go looked good. They haven't kept the ball. So we'll see. We'll see mm -hmm. if they change it up. But the U.S. You have to give credit the U.S. midfield. Uh, the, I mean, they're very good. They press all over the place. They don't give time or space for the Iranian players. And good uh, defensive checking back from Sargent there because he lost the ball and he, he made sure he, Iran weren't, weren't going to score on that possession mm -hmm. where he gave the ball back. Yeah. We've got Doug B., in the uh, YouTube chat, he says, so far, Adams and Dest, best players on the field. Would you both agree with that? Yes. I, yeah. I mean, Weston McKinney's had a, a very um, strong game, too. So I know De Adams and, and Dest have been, been strong in this game. But Adams probably would be, again, man of the match for me so mm -hmm. far. I thought he was a man of match um, against England even though they gave it to Christian Pulisic. Mm -hmm. But um, Tyler Adams, just so important for this yeah. team. He sets He's the everywhere. tone. He's everywhere. Like, uh, prop, proper captain. Just you know you can rely on him, and mm -hmm. he's he's so consistent. Josh Sargent has has had a strong game for him. This mm -hmm. is the best game I've seen uh, from him in a U.S. shirt, so that's encouraging. I'm glad he's taking this opportunity. Uh, and then outside of that, yeah, everyone's been pretty solid. Yeah. Beta, what about for you? Who's been who's looked good? For US? Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I agree. Adams by far. Des has mm-hmm. had a really good game as well, but uh, Adams, I hundred percent agree with Charlie that last game, he should have been mad at the match. I know they gave to Pulisic, but he's very important for the U S and how they play. And he just covers so much space and the pace at which he closes space for me is, you know, a difference maker. Uh, he covers ground, but when he closes, he just players, the opposition, they don't have time or space to pick their heads up because he's already in your face by the time you get it. Uh, so he's, he's been very, very good. Um, and yeah, again, man of the match performance so far from him. Mm Yeah, Iran had a nice little overlap from Rezaian. Uh, Adi Golizadeh played him through. Uh, and Rami, his crosses are usually good. That one just did beat the first defender. But nice little, nice little attack on the right side from Iran. What minute are you at? I'm 62.30. Yeah, okay. that's me. Same. Yep. What are you, like 20 seconds behind us, Charlie? 62.20. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> Literally 20 Almost. seconds. Yeah. Charlie, I, we, we talked about, you know, sort of the U S not making the same mistakes that they did um, against Wales in that, in that second half, like just kind of how they, they came out, how, how confident, you know, are you feeling right now? How do you like what you've seen sort of in the first 20 um, ish, 15 ish minutes? Yeah, I mean, I feel like Iran are, are starting to, to step it up a little bit more. They're mm-hmm. putting more pressure. They're getting numbers higher up the field. So they're they're more aggressive in the counter, I'd mm-hmm. say, at, at the moment. So other than that, I like how the U.S. have, have dictated the tempo and haven't haven't been um, throw, putting balls in, in positions for Iran to win it back, those, those, those small square passes that – basically invite Iran to, to step into and then counter the other way. Mm-hmm. There you go. Kellen Acosta coming on pretty soon. Yep. I wonder Who do we think he's coming in be, for? That, that could easily be for Yunus Musa or it could easily be for uh, Tyler Adams on a yellow, which I hope Protect, you, you, know, I you hope wouldn't do that. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I understand people questioning that, but you just, like you mentioned, if you lose this game, that was pointless to do that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now the score is. <gasps> Stop it. Mm-mm. No, we're fine. Oh. Wow. What a strike. I thought mm-hmm. that went in. I did too. <laughs> so oh. here's, you know, someone yep. who is a oh. very mm-hmm. good finisher. Oh. Wow. God. Mm-hmm. He almost hit it too pure. Mm-hmm. God, it was a gorgeous oh, strike. I would love to see Godos Tarmi and uh, Osman on together. But, man. All it's right. A little shaky moment for the U.S. right now. Mm-hmm. Did they take Weston. off McKinney? Yeah. He's probably still struggling with the quad or groin. Mm-hmm. What did he have? Uh, quad. Quad? Yeah. Also was on a yellow. Yeah. So... That that makes sense. Okay. And to be fair, uh, Kellen for me is similar to Adams. The way he closes, smart player, all over the place, covers a lot of ground. So uh, it's apparently now three nothing England guys. Three nothing. Yep. Yeah, that one's over. Bye bye Wales. Oof. Yep. So a, a reminder to everyone, the um, live standings for Group B are up on the left-hand side of your screen. And um, if the game ended right now, that is how it would look. Oh, I think it was Marcus Rashford again, guys. A double? He's too legit. Rashford. Yeah. With the brace. I think Iran needs to start possessing a little bit, maybe not looking for the straight counter as much. 
you know, U.S. is doing a good job of getting numbers back. Mm -hmm. And so the straight counter isn't necessarily on. So maybe just possess a little bit Mm -hmm. and get guys in good spots, uh, tire out the U.S. players. We'll see if they do that. Yeah, it seems to me that they're forcing it too much. Yeah. Because, again, they don't need to win the game. A goal will win the game for them. A draw is... A draw is a win for them. So you're saying just keep uh, it close. Keep it close. You know, keep it close. Keep keep possession. Right now, uh, oh, it's a little bit back and forth. Yellow. Pacing. Yeah, it's yellow for sure. Uh, you know, they're they're wasting you energy. Don't tell me he doesn't get a yellow for that. Which no which? Ramin Ramin hasn't hasn't okay. looked good this game. He struggled. He's had a couple missed passes and obviously got beat on the Oh, ball. that's a handball. Are you yeah, kidding he's, me? He's struggling a little bit. Good chest control from Sergeant. Free kick, free kick, free kick. Hmm. Why did my stream just freeze? Oh. Did you freeze too? Yeah. All right. No. <laughs> it's a terrible time. That is terrible. Time. <gasps> oh, bear oh, with so us. So now I'm the only one watching. Everyone, right yeah. Now? Charlie. Just wait, because once you catch up, you'll <laughs> you'll freeze as well. At what point did you freeze? I mean, I don't know. The I'm minute. still going. Well, you were 20 seconds behind, so. Yeah, now, well, you... now I'm I'm caught up. <laughs> Let's see. Free Let's kick. See here. What's well, tell us what happens with free kick, Charlie? Yeah, give right. us a little commentating skills for you. All right, you've done plenty of that for New England. Yep, here we go. So, Kelly is is looking like he wants us, Eunice Musa. What minute are you at, Charlie? 68 15. Okay, I'm at 68 19. Oh, are you yeah. back? Suzanne, are I, you yeah, back? so okay. I, I, okay. I refreshed. Close up. Oh, uh, okay. All right. Yeah, there we go. Thank you. Oh, you guys, that was awful. So 68.50, is that what you guys oh, are Oh, no, you're ahead of us now. What are you guys at? 68, I'm at 68.40. Oh, yeah, I'm well ahead. You're wow, well ahead. Great. Wait, hold on. <laughs> hold the phone here. What is and going Musa on? And Musa shot it over. I didn't like that approach. So I didn't – Musa hit it? I yeah, didn't see the – he hit it strike. over. Okay. I didn't like that the approach he took to the ball. Hatchafi has a long throw right here. It was. What should he have done? They're getting a they're getting a dry ball. Cheshmi, good work by drying that ball off for him. All right, a little teamwork from the subs. Oh, that's an interesting warm up style from I don't know who that was. <laughs> Ooh, good header. That was a good header. Charlie, what um what didn't you like about that free kick? The 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 run up was was too close to the ball, and I don't mm-hmm. think he, he had enough power in it. I know it, the the distance is close, but from that range, it's very difficult to get it over the wall and down. So typically, you just have to hit it with power and try to try and play between a wall, uh, between a player, or or hit it um, to the goalkeeper side. So I, I don't think it was the the best uh, way to attack that free kick. Okay. Okay. Okay, I'm at 70, 16 right now. Where's everyone? Oh, 70, you guys 15. are flying yeah. ahead of me. Charlie, how, what how did you... that happen? All right, I'm going to get I'm gonna out try. of yours and come back. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to try something here. Let's see if this works. <laughs> Two subs coming from coming okay. for a run. Throw be coming on midfielder. Get some fresh legs out there. Mm hmm. So they have – did they just have one yeah, sub-window on. left? Uh, yeah, yeah. one sub-window left. And two players okay. that they can they can uh, bring on. One window, two players. All right, what, oh, what, what time is everybody? 71.02. Oh, yeah. God. Where are you? I don't even worry about it. Okay. <laughs> did you go backwards? Yeah, it's, I, I, I went literally backwards. 
What is it? Oh, Kendrick Faf. He says, does anyone know if this game is tied at full time? Is there extra time? No. No. The answer is no. But thank you for the question. Yes, Kendrick, this game can end in a tie. And if it does, um, then Iran will go through. U.S. will not. So, Charlie, we know that, um, you know, getting a second goal would be very, very uh, beneficial and important for the U.S. Mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. now. But how do you balance that with, you know, <laughs> kind of like exposing yourself <laughs> in, in the back? Like, how much do you go for it um, without risking, you know, giving up all that space? Yeah. In terms of it's it's comes down to the midfielders. And yeah. how many players are are are, you, are bombing forward to get into the box? So you, you still allow Tim Tim Weah, Sargent, even Eunice Musa at times, uh, Brent Aronson. You, it's almost like you attack with four. You let them do their thing. Great. The rest of the team, looking at cover, you know, making sure that Tim Ream and Cameron Carter Vickers are always two v one. They're never left one v one. Mm -hmm. So that in those instances, you have your outside backs pinched in and everyone's protected. So mm -hmm. that's how you don't open yourself up. It's when you're chasing the game, you're throwing numbers forward and you're leaving Tim Ream and Cam Cameron Carter Vickers 1v1. That's not their strength. Mm -hmm. They are not center backs that can play 1v1, especially when um, the, the players they're playing against outpace them. So um, this is a, a time where you don't take chances and risks in, in the defensive half. You have you have plenty of cover. That was a awkward landing. Yeah. Oh, oh. He hyperextended his right knee. It looked yeah, like. I did. Ah! Uh Sergeant. Yeah, I don't want to watch that. Yeah, I don't like that. But it's weird. He's holding his other leg. Oh. Is he not? Is he? No. Oh no, he is. No. He's grabbing his ankle. Okay. But it's the uh, ankle. Torabi came on. Oh, yes. Yeah, an and he's looked good uh, the last few moments. What has he brought? Play, what has he, he brought, Beta? You know, he's, he's oh, you know, on that last play, he got the ball on the half turn and he drove at the U.S. and played a good ball. You know, he didn't just make a safe pass just to connect the pass. I think that's good. That's what you need right now. Uh, guys need to come on and uh, take initiative to, to make something of the game. So it, it's not a moment to be safe and just go side to side and mm -hmm. keep possession. You got you have to go for it. So, uh, you know, but carefully, you don't want to just give the ball away or carelessly, I should say, you don't want to just give the ball away. But yeah, that's, that, that looked like a hurt from Sarge. Yeah. Hopefully it, he's it, all right. It's one of the, I've, I've, I've had this happen to me before <laughs> jumping a defender and then uh -huh. you, you, your, your foot either catches the ball before it touches the ground and, and it causes your foot to change direction so you mm -hmm. don't get the cleanest landing or i've also caught and caught a defender's foot when i land so all of a sudden your ankle gets a that sharp twist oh hyper extended is it is it is it the ankle that they're looking at yeah yeah i thought it was gonna be the knee that's what i thought but, initially yeah, just because you, you it take that an, you take an ankle all day over the knee that's for the ankle is probably just jammed right yeah. charlie yeah Rather, rather than hyperextension, the knee, that's potential ligaments. So that's at least good. This mm -hmm. is just, I mean, it depends how bad and it hurts. Sergeant, it, Sergeant I mean, I think everyone is in agreement that he's had a, a really good day today. Yeah. And and at this well. point, if it's if it's ginger, you, you got to make the substitution. You have to change. Who do you bring up from? <sighs> it, it might not be bad to move Tim Weah to the central position here. Um, and then bring on Gio. Yeah, uh, that that might be the best move at this point. Because 15 minutes left, you don't really need to worry about fitness. Uh, no. So, so that might be that might be a good move for the for the U.S. But are you losing something defensively bringing on Reyna? Yes, you are. So there's that to think about. You could bring oh, on control. DeAndre Yedlin. 
That's another what a option. Right for guest? No, for for um for for oh for sergeant, you move way out there and you put Dest um you put uh Des Yedlin as a oh. right winger. And oh Yedlin as a right winger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he's like that right back, right kind of wing back type of role. Yeah. You Would know you he, say he, he's, he's better at that or is Dest better at that? Yeah. Because I think Yedlin is a better defender than uh Dest. And you so literally can almost... swap them. Yeah, I'd, I I think you'd probably do that. Okay, who's coming on? The problem okay. is, you, you know, it's uh, there's just great chemistry right now with Dest in the back line. Mm -hmm. That's like Haji. Yeah. All right. All right. Like for like. Yeah. They probably did the same thing you and I did, Charlie. They were having too many debates. So, <laughs> who plays where? So I said, no, let's just go like for like. It's easier. <laughs> David Tompkins want to know, wants to know, is this the right sub? I, yeah, I know. Um, what about Jesus Ferreira? <laughs> That's what J.M. No, Guapo wants to no, know. No, not Jesus. Okay. I think Jesus is so far down the totem pole now. Mm -hmm. You 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 needed a player who whoever was going to come in that is going to work defensively that you can count on to work defensively, and I think the reason they went with Haji Wright is because they also are expecting a player to hold up the ball because you can't just expect now. All right, last fifteen minutes of the game, we're just going to defend, which is kind of what you would be doing if you. If you really made a, a, a defensive substitution at that point, you're you have no there's there's no uh, real motivation to play mm -hmm. forward and hold the ball. Haji Wright, you still expect him to keep the ball for the team so you can win keep possession in the attacking half, which I think that's that's the understanding with Haji Wright making Haji Wright the substitution there. Looks like Iran just made their last sub. Yep. Karim came on for Golizade, so I think they had one more player available, if I'm not mistaken, but that was their last window. So that will be that will be it for them. So this is it. I mean, yeah. The U.S. has one more window, correct? Yes, yes one more. Okay. And I mean, it could be a foul. Beta, have you seen anything in this? second half that allows you to believe that Iran has a goal in them, that they could e find the equalizer in the yeah. final 10 minutes and change. I think the U S has done a good job of not allowing them to do that. I think they've tried. Uh, someone had a really good chance on the one that just missed the upper 90 by a foot or so. But other than that, I don't feel like they've had as many half chances as uh, let's say the U S had in the first half. So it's, it's not as much of a, a flip of the script that I thought it would be mm -hmm. at halftime like we spoke about. But again, 10 minutes, uh, you know, they haven't had to be desperate yet. We, we mentioned it. A, a goal for Iran is like two goals. You know, a draw is a win for them. So yeah. they don't need to go crazy, uh, but they can't give up a second. I think mm -hmm. that still has to play in the back of their minds. Yes. But also, like ten minutes is ten minutes, so you, you know it, you have to figure out what is that moment. You know, ten minutes mm -hmm. is a lot of time, and if you wait too late to go aggress, ultra aggressive, like yeah, is five minutes. To, five minutes might not be enough time. Mm -hmm. Ten is usually the the moment, right? Ten is like okay, yes. we got to start pushing. Yes. Yeah. Eighty first minute, you you, you got to start saying, guys, yeah. it's time now. Yeah. Yeah, because if you wait 85th and on, you really don't give yourself enough time. I don't mm -hmm. think I agree with you. I think this is this is time for Iran to, you know what? Let's just push. <sighs> Looks like there's a sub coming from the U.S. Des is coming off. And who we got? Yedlin probably. Oh, Walker, Zimmerman, oh, Walker. and uh, Shaq Moore. Oh, no, Shaq Moore, not Yedlin. Wow. Yeah, Weah uh, and Charlie just off. That makes sense to bring Zimmerman on, but uh, Charlie, are you surprised Morris coming on instead of Yedlin? 
or is yellow is more a better defender? So I think I mean Yellow's with Moore's performance against England, I I would say no. Okay. He he didn't show me that he 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 literally fouled. I think he most of his his plays were fouls. So that's a, that that one's a little bit of a shocker to me, but yeah. Oh God! Oh. Who is that? Oh, where's Christina? Christina. <laughs> <laughs> let's see. All right. Saying, hold on. Let's get her. Let's get her in. What? What? What are we? What's happening here? Oh gosh. Christina. What, yes. What I did we see here? Mm hmm. All right. So effectively what they're looking for is two different things, right? One is potential offside. Two, they're arguing for a handling of fence, but I think more there, mm -hmm. which the reality is it, this reverse camera angle is perfect. This is exactly what we need, right? It looks more like it's the uh, Iran attacker. It hit more of the upper arm thing. So we're not going to have a handling offense here unless there's another view that comes out. Yeah. Um, what effectively they're looking, so they were looking for two things offside, right? Um, mm -hmm. which would negate the potential handling here. We have no handling, no Both handling clean. Yeah. ball going in and out is exactly what the play was. And it looks like while the ball was on the ground, someone lifted their hand and actually go sure enough, actually handled the offense right there in the line. So that's why we have a set piece at the moment. Okay. Yeah. Kind of to help break down all of oh that. Oh my God. You guys scared, calls. you scared the bejesus <laughs> out of me. But you know that's how that's how much it takes, right? And we can't mm -hmm. restart play in VAR um, until we're able to see that. And yeah. truly, the best angle always is that behind the goal angle because the referees will never be there. AR and referee will never be there, and that that's the one that just gave me a quick check complete. We're good. Yeah. Right? Okay, no concern there. Christina, Thanks, while Christina. we while we have you, um, can you kind of uh, give us the lowdown on on stoppage time and what it can mean for for this game in particular? Yeah. I mean, you guys have seen throughout the World Cup, there's been a lot of stoppage time. Uh, I'm sorry, they're showing it again. Yep, yep. easy, cool, quick check complete. Okay, um, <laughs> just making sure no other surprising angle pops up, but it would have been done anyways. So stoppage time in the World Cup, we've seen it. It's been increased more. FIFA really came out in the press conference and said, we are going to add more time to make sure that people aren't dilly-dallying, wasting time, right, working in the black arts, that respect. Um Things to remember is uh, additional time is given for substitutions, um, any excessive goal celebration, assessment of injuries, and then there's this huge catch-all phrase, right? Anything else that we feel like is needed. And since considering I think we've already had four substitutions in this half alone, not including mm -hmm. at the halftime, plus that injury uh, that occurred, uh, I think, to Sargent, we're effortlessly without this excessive additional time that was being given in the World Cup normally – uh, this is easily going to be looked at probably four to five minutes of extra time that we'll see here uh, okay. in this game alone. Um, and if the U.S. keeps taking their sweet time to get off, they're going to keep adding more. So Great. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Good to keep in mind, Christina. Thank you so yep. much. We appreciate no it. No problem. Oh, gosh. Okay. So, um, you know, five minutes until the full 90. And then, as mm -hmm. Christina said, Four to five minutes, perhaps, of of stoppage time here. Um, I, I I don't know. I Charlie, how I feel this is so nervy. It's so nervy right now for for the U.S. Are you? How do you feel about how they're playing right now at this stage in the game? It's uh, oh. it's one of those moments where. You got your lead. You know now. It's just you're yeah. looking to defend. Everyone has to has to be behind the ball. Mm -hmm. Haji Wright isn't a counterattack player, so you hope that he's just going to win fouls, hold the ball mm -hmm. up. But ultimately, you're just trying to prevent silly fouls, no set pieces. You're not trying to give away corner kicks. Keep the play in front of you, and and don't dive in. Mm -hmm. Let them be the ones who are trying to force the plays, force the passes, force the crosses. But as long as you're anticipating and reading and, and you provide cover, then then normally you're you're in a good place. Mm -hmm. And for Iran beta, I mean they just this is this is it. You're just going for it. Yeah, I think US looks organized right now with a five four one. And so it's tough for the for the Iran team to 
you know, get past that. There's not much space. Yeah. Uh, you know, they're trying to play it wide, but because there are five in the back line, you see more, uh, you see Robinson going out and closing quickly, not allowing mm -hmm. the, the Iran wingers to turn. So it's tough. I, I don't know. I don't know what Iran can do. They've, they've used their subs, maybe change the formation a little bit. Cause yeah, I imagine there's gonna be six or seven minutes of stoppage time. So that puts us about 10 minutes left from now. Um, so I don't know, maybe you change the formation, maybe you go a little direct and try to play for the second ball because right now it's, you're not really getting anything. No. Oh, 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 oh. When, when, I thought that was going to be a lot closer than it was. Yeah. So <laughs> the ball just kind of kept like drifting He's away. Like, from oh. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe because the center backs are getting a lot oh, of time. Oh, what a run. cut from you, Aaron's You're not going to play through them. So under. maybe just go direct and play for the second ball. Oh, here you go. Here's a little chance. You got to take them or whip it in. That's not it. Oh, no. What'd you say? Oh, no uh, Shaq Moore. I thought he gave up a corner with no one on him, but ended up going out for a throw in. Oh, good ball. Nope. See, this is Walker Zimmerman's bread and butter. Mm -hmm. Opposition starts whipping in, he heads everything out. So this was a good move by Greg to bring him in, go into the five. Yeah, I wanted to ask you guys on your uh, your take on the, the subs. Yeah, I mean, no doubt this is what I expected from, yeah. from Greg to bring in Zimmerman to play in, in the middle of a back five. I think the timing was perfect exactly mm -hmm. when you expected Iran to just start whipping balls in and playing mm -hmm. long balls. So now I just, everyone has to be organized. Yep. We got an Iran free kick right, or a corner right corner now. Kick, yeah. Two, no one. Oh, he, he, I thought he put that out for a throw and he kicked it. I thought so corner. too. Yeah. I was a little surprised when he was hitting the corner. All right, what are you guys' calls? How much uh, stoppage time? I, I'm Give still I'm on still on eighty eight forty five. I think it's going to be five minutes. Five? Yeah. I think I think seven. Okay. I I better not see seven. <laughs> six. I, we, we'll go with six. I'll go with six. I've seen a lot more. Realistically, it should be five, but because every game I've been shocked how much stoppage time, I'm going to go seven. I'll go six. I think that's six, a safe. Five, five six. That's seven. a safe Let's bet. See what it is. Good, Haji. Oh, guys, Christina backstage is saying eight minutes. That's her guess. Eight minutes. Ooh, ooh. Christina, That's no! That's a lot. Let's see. Yikes. We're about 20 seconds away from finding out. Ooh. Good defending. He had more on the overlap, but then he just kicks it. Yeah. <sighs> My heart's beating really fast right now. No, you can't oh lose goodness. the ball dribbling there. I haven't seen it. I'm at 90 minutes, but I haven't seen the stoppage time. Nine? No! Oh, no. No! <laughs> Price is right. I was closest. <laughs> you were. <laughs> but, man, nine. That's All right. a lot. At a minimum, too, because if there's some Kellen Acosta black arts, he's very good at that. Oh, my goodness let's, gracious. Let's see if they add more. <clears throat> but the U.S. looks comfortable right now. They're okay with Iran having this at half. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look, it, when it goes wide, the fullbacks, the wingbacks for the U.S., they go out, put pressure. For me, yeah, you got to go direct to try to get the second ball in between the lines. Uh, that's the only chance for their free run right now because nothing's coming from just making these passes. Mm -mm. The U.S. likes this. This is comfortable for the U.S. 
look at it goes side to side next yep. guy step up this is like yep. a training session for them mm -hmm. it goes side to side next guy step up <gasps> okay good header walker I, I my my heart is in my throat be smart be smart be smart okay This is just a long time for them. Yeah. I mean, it's just, you know, one one little mistake. Mm -hmm. And, and you're so you're so committed to defending. <laughs> you know. Oh, foul. Come on. Charlie, I think uh Carter Vickers has looked good. Would you agree? Yes. He's, he's very, had a good very game. good. Yeah. He's he's looked very good. If the results hold that that'll be a a uh, bold move by uh, Greg, but I think a good one because he's he stepped up on the occasion. Mm -hmm. Now, now, the, and and Sergeant for me solidified that nine spot. But if he's not a hundred percent, what do you what do you do? No! Oh my god! Oh god! You you made my heart just sink. Well, mine almost did just sink. Um, oh god! Oh my word! I almost, threw up. I almost and... threw up on the desk. I almost threw up on this desk when you Turner, got that. Turner right. hat. Turner had it. Turner had it. Whew. Okay. Man, that's a tough one, but Purali Ganji can just deflect it to the back post. Mm -hmm. That's a tough one. Obviously, a lot easier to say. Mm -hmm. But then you got runners and just, you got a lot of traffic. That's it. I mean, it, we still got six minutes of stoppage time to play. And th yeah. these are the things that can happen. You get, you know. This might be Ron's only chance is on set pieces. On a set piece. Think, and I, you talked about this, Beta. Yeah. You talked yeah. about this is this is something that they they work on, that they yeah. take pride in. And that mm -hmm. that's what makes me nervous as yeah. the US. I, I, I think they're gonna have to get the ball wide or even in the midfield and try to take a player on and almost set up the US defenders to foul them. You know, you're kind of looking for it. Cause I don't think they'll get a goal on the run of play. Um but we'll see. Man, I don't remember feeling this way in a long time. Mm -hmm. I always feel this way when I'm watching games. I hate it. But, but to this level? Yeah. Oh, I feel... I, it's weird. I don't get nervous for games when I'm playing, but I get so nervous when I'm watching my teams play. It's just... Mm -hmm. Not fun. Like my legs can't stop moving. <laughs> just <laughs> got the shakes. Um, Five yeah, just, to go. The, for those uh, watching and who might not know, the reason we're all so nervous is that um, the U.S. need this result to hold in order for them to move on. Um, if if Iran are able to find an equalizer, they will not be going through. Well done by Tyler chasing down. Look at look at. Tyler, just covering everywhere. Again, man of the match performance. He didn't get it last game, but he's been so good this Man of the match. Mm -hmm. He better be holding that little trophy, red trophy at the end of the uh, this game. Charlie, who votes for these man of the matches? I, I know. know. Uh, yeah, it's a great question. I know De Bruyne. De Bruyne is like, yeah, I don't know why I got this. Uh, yeah. Probably because of my name. I'm sure Same Pulisic for the last yes. game. You know? So i wonder who votes for these because i thought adam's last game was phenomenal i think this game again if the results hold he should be man of the match but they might give it to pulses because he got the goal you know i don't know interesting who all right four minutes <laughs> oh there's the yellow on iran Defender, he got uh, he lost possession. Oh, US was about to yeah. break, and oh, he boy. just held him for dear life. So, Gabriel on <laughs> YouTube, I'm scared out of my mind. Yes, that makes two of us. We Thank we you. are all all in <laughs> this a together. Lot of nerves we are all in this, in this together right people. now. Lot keep, of nerves. Keep the, keep the faith. Whoo. Oh, 
poor giveaway. I'm glad they gave it back. So three minutes to go. Three minutes. Yeah. Three minutes to go. I, again, Shaq Moore with with these yeah. passes. Mm-hmm. And I just can't imagine point. he plays next game if, he, if they he, advance. I can't imagine he he has not shown whatsoever in with his minutes that he should yeah. be on the field for defensive reasons. He's given the ball away and he's given fouls away. Yeah. I feel for it. Oh my God. Axe all. I'm at work listening nervous as hell. I can't imagine being in a setting where I was supposed to be like super professional. Um, <laughs> have watching this right now. We feel I'm for the, you. I'm, I'm on the verge of, blowing up and eruption erupting and going crazy and uh-huh. then throwing up also it, like right, like, exactly i know yeah. it's going to be one or the other oh god yeah also <laughs> we have we have a post game show to do guys so we have to whatever the result is we have to keep it together um oh, and talk no. about this <laughs> this is going to be the shortest post game ever everybody <laughs> hang out with us two minutes to go <sighs> Woo. <sighs> How'd you write? You got to win that there. To yeah, Aronson. he had. You have Aronson to keep wide that ball. Open. You have to keep that ball. This is what they needed to do. Mm-hmm. Get the second ball. You know Walker's going to win it. Mm-hmm. But make the U.S. collapse, and then now you have some space on the outsides. But right now, the pass to the pass to the pass, you're not really getting anything. There you go. Go direct. Look for the second ball. Wait, what minute are you at? Oh! Oh, we I'm literally at 98 right now. One minute. Oh One my minute left goodness. For stoppage time. Oh my I gosh. don't know what they're complaining about, but they're complaining. Oh gosh. What what time are you at? I'm at 98.06. This is going to, the ball's going out. They're uh-huh. going to. What are they looking at? Watch. What are they looking at? I don't know. They're saying somebody held they're saying someone. Foul on, foul. on uh, they're saying Cameron foul. Carter Vickers pulling Taremi back. Okay, he's on. I, can't, I couldn't really see. Oh, he yanks them. Oh no. Oh no. No. What Did do you think? Him? Is it going to be? He yanked him. Christina. Christina yank him. Yeah. Did he pull him? No. I mean, there's so there's expected challenges, right? There's expected body contact. A check is happening. VAR is taking a look at, at looking at it to see whether or not. And I need to correct. No, every, that's not let enough. People know. For that's me, this enough, is not though. enough. For that's me, not this enough. is not enough. That's I not agree a clear with Charlie. Um, for me, this is not enough. We've seen some inconsistencies with the recommendations, however, unfortunately, in the World Cup. Oh, I'm really, man. really, really hoping that this is going to be a check complete. It's a big decision, and it's a check complete. Let's Every go! says, play on. Woo! We are yeah, good go. here. We're supported by a fellow Spanish VAR. So I love Woo! your style. Don't, All right. you, don't do that shock face again, Christina, baby. God. thank you. Thank oh, you, my thank God. You. I was ready to throw up. You know everyone's going to complain about that because he – Definitely could have gotten that to is it. Nothing, though. That's, well, that, it's, that is he enough. did get to it still, right? So that's we're a, anytime people are challenging in the air, and here it's not even in the air. There's gonna be upper arm body contact. Blow the yeah. whistle. Blow so the whistle. Expected. Blow the I think that's an expected arm contact. For the quarter. If I'm go to the Carter quarter. Vickers, though, I'm not. I'm not taking that chance. I'm not How putting my hands on him. Like go to the corner at that wow. point. What are you taking a shot oh, there Christina, for? thank you so much. I'm sure we'll see you in the post game show at some point. Maybe. Who knows? Haji Wright, what are you doing? Go to the corner. Is it over? It's over. It's over. No, it's not. Is it? It's over. Oh, we both. Wow. Is it over for real? We won. I don't believe it. Yes! Let's go! Let's go! Woo! Tyler Adams is literally all of us. Oh, my. He is on the ground. Let's go! like just exo- mentally exhausted let's go oh my go! goodness oh okay i you know what yes I seeing the iran oh my players, I, that hurts my heart too though wow that was out of the group an exciting Woo! unbeaten let's that's where i wanted the whole game to be that exciting at the very end uh-huh uh-huh. That was exciting. Woo! That was a heck of a finish. Oh, oh, There's man. gonna be some talking points about so, the potential pool or Luke, not, but man. There's no talking points. There. USA into the round of 16. Oh M Ole, 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 ole. Oh M G. 
Um, guys, USA moving on to the knockout stages in the World Cup after a 1-0 win over oh. Iran. Um, this one was nervy as hell, um, especially there at the end. But um, at the end of the day, they get it done. Let's take a look at the, uh, the group standings. This is how it finished in Group B. England finished on top of that group with the... Uh, Seven points, United States in second with five, and it is um, Iran and Wales that are um, the World Cup journey ends there for those teams. Oh, remember that bracket that everybody was yelling at me for putting up? Guess what? We can put it up right. now because here it is. Um, the youth oh. will be facing off against <laughs> the Netherlands. And then we've got a matchup between England and Senegal. Um, oh, I, Charlie, Charlie, tell me just, you know, the emotions. I know this has been um, a, a journey for you the last few hours, but where are you yes. at right now? Mm. Proud. Proud. I am. I am proud. The, Think of just this emotional roller coaster we've been on since the Nations League final. To be honest, they win the Nations League final against Mexico. Mexico was the clear favorites, and then just the ups and downs of World Cup qualifying. And a lot of people were doubting if Greg Berhalter could manage this team, if they could coach, if they had the right pieces. And look at them, unbeaten mm -hmm. in the group stage, and they're going through, mm -hmm. and. More importantly, just locking it down defensively. Yeah, they couldn't do that throughout throughout World Cup qualifying. Mm -hmm. Finally, they said we we Tim Ream comes into the team, ha has helped tremendously, just organizing the back line, building out of the back. And yes, they haven't been as productive as we'd all like in front of goal. Mm -hmm. But they scored two goals in group stage. They're through to the next round. This is a win. This is success. This Huge. is progress. We go from not qualifying in 2018 yep. to now we're Advancing. through to the next round. Think of that. Let's go. Massive, massive statement. Um, Beta, I know this uh, This has got to be mixed emotions for you. How are How are you feeling right now? Yeah, it is. It is. It's, uh, you know, I, I, was, I was watching a bunch of different games where there's parents in the stands and one of their kids, the World Dan Brothers, one of them plays for the U.S., one plays for El Salvador. Who are you rooting for? It's it's tough. I'm happy for the U.S. right now, obviously, mm -hmm. born and raised in the U.S. and California. Uh, I'm sad for Iran. Obviously, I played for them. Uh, I know some of the players still. I know the coaching staff. Uh, it's mixed emotions. Uh, but, but, but yeah. Let's, let, what about just – I know you have to be proud on, on, on the Iranian side just too, just on, on what they've had to deal with mm -hmm. heading into yeah. this tournament. But yeah. I know you, you touched on it pregame. Just talk about how you, them being in this, uh, on, on playing in the World Cup, having this platform to talk about what's happening in the country and, and just how important that's been just to spread that word, to get people educated, as Tyler Adams yeah. uh, kindly um, made that known in, in, in the, the press conference where he was asked about uh, the mispronunciation, the common mispronunciation of Americans um, oh, yeah. when, when talking about Iran. So how, how has that just helped the country for these players to go out there and, and play with pride, but also trying to make people aware of, of the, the turmoil, the conflict within the country? Yeah, super proud of them. Um, there's so much pressure on these players to not only perform, but there's the political issue right now. For you know, two months now, there, you know, Masa Amini was wrongfully killed because her hijab wasn't all the way over her head, right? So to get killed over that, it really, really, really it's bugged the people in Iran for a long time, but now they've just had enough. Uh, there's a revolution, full revolution going on right now. And the players are under a lot of pressure from uh, the fans. There's 80 million proud uh, Iranians watching their team and they want them to make a stance. They mm -hmm. want them, you know, to have signs on their shirts, to not sing the anthem, to to take a knee, to not even, they don't even want them to play, honestly. And so it's a tough moment as a player. You play, you, you work your whole life to get to this moment. The World Cup, it's the biggest stage for a footballer, right? And now you just want to play well and, and make your people proud. But your people aren't proud because they are going through a revolution where if they protest, they will be thrown in jail. 
uh, or even killed. A lot of them are just being killed. You know, we they don't have the luxury like we do in the States where they can protest peacefully. Uh, you know, the government doesn't let them. They'll, mm-hmm. they'll throw them in jail. They'll kill them. And so uh, these these players to come out and perform and put up a fight. And mm-hmm. I just hope that the fans uh, are proud of them for that. I, I know there are a lot of different people pulling them in different directions, but it's got to be so tough. I can't even imagine just to perform and play the game at a high level, but with that many people, uh, you know, weighing all, all that on your shoulders and saying, do this, do that. Uh, they, they showed up, they played, and they were a goal away from, again, unfortunately for the third World Cup, a goal away from advancing to the next round. So, uh, but, you know, hopefully the talks continue because I, I think it needs to in order for there to be change in Iran mm-hmm. uh, because, uh, you know, Charlie, you know some, some Iranians here in the U.S., uh, and anyone that you've met, I'm sure you have nothing but great things to say about the people of Iran. You know, they are great people. Uh, you know, they, they want to be loved. In, and unfortunately, they are in a dispute right now with their government. And, and what's going on right now, hopefully it continues on social media. And hopefully people continue to spread awareness of that. Yeah, I think that's it. And I, I, I think there's so much as you mentioned, Beta, to, for this team to, to be proud of. And you saw, I mean, you saw the emotion on those guys' faces when the, the final whistle blew. Um, and, you know, it's it's one thing, obviously, the it's the highest of stakes when you're playing in a World Cup from a competition standpoint. But when you add in all of the, the off-the-field issues that they're also dealing with and burden with but what i think is so special is that you know they've embraced that they they see the platform that they have to create awareness and continue these conversations and keep it in the forefront um and i love i love the way that they that team has em- embraced that um and so i think that there there is a so much to be proud of um with that iranian team and yeah i mean it's always heartbreaking to see a team get eliminated um so it's, you know, that balancing of emotions of, yeah, I'm sure you're just, you know, heartbroken for them. And then we've got the the U.S. who are moving on. And I don't think a lot of people gave them much of a chance to to move on in this group when we when we saw who they were going to be um, up against. But for me, you know, I, I just want to focus on I want to focus on what they were able to achieve. I think like you know, holding, they've only allowed one goal in, in group stage. I mean, yes, they're, <laughs> we want to score more goals, but I think, you know, defensively, um, they looked so strong and I just like Charlie, and I feel like you can speak to this as well. You know, we've come to, we've come to know and appreciate the U S teams that have competed in world cups as teams that are tenacious, that f- fight like hell that do not give up. They're a hard, hard opponent to no one wants to play them. They're a team that nobody wants mm-hmm. to play in this type of tournament. And I think that for me, having watched them through qualifiers, I felt like that, that tooth was missing, you know, like a, there was a, an edge that was kind of missing in this group. And I feel like I've seen it in, in these games, you know, there's this desire and there's um, just a, a, a sheer willingness to, to get the result that they needed. And I think for me, that's what um, kind of makes me the happiest and proudest who, right who, now. Who, who would have thought that right? getting absolutely slammed and slapped up by uh, Japan and Saudi Arabia would have this, this positive effect on, right? on the group as well as I think Greg Berhalter, just because he he made the change from mm-hmm. Aaron Long, which I think was always uh, the plan for him to partner Walker Zimmerman to Tim Ream, and Tim Ream has been absolutely fantastic. I take Superb. back every bad thing I've said. Um, <laughs> and you know, we saw today there are a couple of occasions where Tim Ream got pulled out, mm-hmm. and and Iran was able to generate some sort of chance or or uh, whip in a ball, but ultimately. Bringing Tim Ream into the team has given them a foundation, and mm-hmm. and the relationship with him and Antti Robinson at the club level, I think that plays a, a big role. Matt Turner hasn't been tested too often, and when he has, he's stepped up. Um, and then the midfield trio, Tyler Adams, this man needs to be playing at Real Madrid, uh, a top a top club. He is sensational. Mm-hmm. He is the he's been the the player of the tournament for. The- so far, just everywhere, a real captain on the field as well as off the field. He's mm-hmm. setting the tone for this group. And it is clear and obvious, 
as uh, Christina would love the, this, the term, the terminology. It is clear and obvious to me that Tyler Adams has taken the role of being someone who can lead a team um, in, in setting the tone, in transition, breaking up um, plays. If someone makes a mistake, guess who's there to 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 follow up and, and help the team out and support? It's just Tyler Adams. And then Wes McKinney had some magic moments in this game. Uh, mm -hmm. I think the first game, was he wasn't as strong. Um, second game, he got better, had some great moments. And then today, uh, up until he was sub substituted, I think in the second half, he slowed down a little bit just because he lost some energy. But what was fantastic. So that midfield trio has been above, uh, uh, has played above and beyond what what, it, what I had expected, um, as well as the back line, just not giving up many opportunities. Yeah. And then Tim Weah, Phenomenal. Christian mm -hmm. Pulisic also getting better, getting closer to mm -hmm. phenomenal where mm -hmm. we want to see him. And then Sergeant balled today. There was Sergeant absolutely balled today because his hold up play was phenomenal. He was active. Uh, he made good runs, but he was also getting the ball. People, I don't think, trusted Sergeant to keep the ball, to, to be effective. That wasn't the case today. He, he got on the ball in the box. He, he worked defensively. Locked up that nine spot with that performance today. I just hope that injury to his ankle that forced him to get subbed is not yeah. too serious. But let's go. I'm hyped. Let's go. Here's let's the go. Here. Doyle's here. Let's get get Doyle in here. He said it was gonna let's be a go. Draw. Hey, no, in. we're gonna bring in we're gonna bring in Christina first before we bring in Doyle because we did have um hi Christina. Hello again. <laughs> Hello. I heard her laughing in the waiting room. She's just listening to Charlie go off. I love it. Um, but we do there was um a, a, a play at the end that was a potential foul in the box that was ultimately uh, not called. Can you kind of walk us through what happened here? Yeah. So, I mean, we got that play. And the last thing, and I believe it was Carter Vickers, who was a defender for the United States here, has an arm on the right-hand shoulder of our Iran attacker there, which I believe was Tarimi. Um, however, it is not does not rise to a foul, let alone a penalty that is a game decider or changer for this game. And not just because we're saying in and of itself, it's not a foul. OK, mm -hmm. but more importantly, people are saying VAR didn't check it. Yes, VAR did check it. As soon as that foul occurs, VAR is hitting the button. They are taking a look at this from all the different camera angles that they have, which are reverse camera angles. And mind you, this is the FIFA World Cup. They have over 20 different camera angles, high, low back camera angles to be able to see the level of contact here. This level of contact is very, very low. It's expected uh, type of upper body contact. It's not the type that went and pulled him. We didn't do a horse collar here and drag him down. And the Iran attacker still had the ability to play the ball. So um, all of this was checked when the ball went out for a throw in, right? You could see the referee stop the game uh, temporarily to allow the completion of that check. He got a mm -hmm. check complete. And I believe 100% this is the preferred decision and the recommended decision for no VAR intervention and not even an error on the field. But, Christina, if this was called a penalty, this stands, right? Because it is not a clear and obvious error to overturn it just because of that contact. So, Charlie, great question because in this tournament, and I know we use the clear and obvious error. It's part mm -hmm. of the VAR protocol. However, mm -hmm. these FIFA officials have worked together for four-plus years. And what the tournament direction is to them, if you think it's an error, not even a clear and obvious error, and that's why you're seeing some VAR okay. recommendations that are not as normal as we expect because they don't rise to the level of what we think are clear and obvious errors. But if it, they think it's an error, they would recommend it down, right? Me taking a look at that with that mindset, knowing that, I have right um, uh, my FIFA instructor saying, if you think this is an error, send it down. If that would have been given on the field, they're also saying, let the referee have a second look at some of these. I would recommend this down for a review because of the minimal amount of contact, that upper shoulder that mm -hmm. in live game, you might've thought he had grabbed him and pulled him down. If you take a look at that, you see that it's a placement of the hand open mm -hmm. onto his shoulder, but not enough to pull him down. So if it was given, I would have, if I was in the booth, I would have recommended it down for the VA, for the referee to take a second look at it. Great well stuff. Said. Christina, thank you so much. You are, you are the queen, the best. Um, Top class. We appreciate, we appreciate You guys are great. Love to listen to you guys. <laughs> your, your insight. Um, okay, guys, let's talk about, um, let's talk about Cameron Carter Vickers in this game um, because this was 
one of the the moves that we, you know, I guess maybe was a surprise um, because we had seen that center back pairing of Tim Ream and uh, Walker Zimmerman, and he decided to go with Cameron Carter Vickers in this game. But um, I mean, Beta and Charlie, both of you um, throughout the match were talking about how well he played. Um, Beta, let's go to you. Why why was this the right choice from Greg Berhalter in this match? Yeah, I think he had a phenomenal game. Obviously, if that penalty does get called, all of a sudden he's going to be vilified and uh, they're going to question why he played over Zimmerman. But fortunately for him, it wasn't called and he had a very good game. You know, Charlie and I were, you know, singing his praises earlier and saying that he he covered the space, his aerial duels he won, he, uh, you know, he didn't get beat, he didn't give up any silly challenges. So everything that you ask of a defender, uh, make it tough for your opponent to score. I mm -hmm. think he did that. Um, and so, you know, we'll see next game. I think he kind of solidified that spot for next game as well with this performance. Uh, Charlie, what do you think? Yes. Uh, I think Cameron Carter Vickers, he, he handled his business. Um, he was physical when he needed to be physical. He won his challenges, good anticipation today. Uh, I think the difference between him and Zimmerman is just the ball at their feet. Um, making sure that you're not giving, uh, making the wrong decision with your your distribution. And so with that being said, I, I don't see him switching it up uh, for, for the next game against the Netherlands. If, if it was a team that relied heavily on on crosses and, and long balls and, and knockdowns and for sure, but the Netherlands are clean with their with their passes they they play to they choose to play to to their to their um their teammates feet so Gakpo and, and Depay those are going to be the strikers they're playing with two strikers now both of them like the ball on the ground so for me I'm always going to take a defender who's better with the with the ball on the ground and in their feet than than a player who is is relying on on set pieces and in, in aerial duels okay Okay, let's uh, let's get another opinion on this, shall we? Let's bring in Matt Doyle, who's been waiting ever so patiently in our uh, waiting room. Doyle, what do you think? Um, Cameron Carter Vickers is he getting the start against the Netherlands? Yeah, I mean it, it's a, it's a good question. It's it's a nice question to have if you're if sure. you're the manager because through three games the U.S. have given up what three good chances from open play at at most three good chances and that that happened with. Walker Zimmerman and uh, Tim Ream through the first two games, and then Ream and Carter Vickers through today. I, I agree with what you guys were just saying. Like he basically didn't put a foot wrong, other than very questionable penalty, which I will say never a penalty. Come on, mm -hmm. it, like absolutely never a penalty. Um, but like, okay, uh, if you have to pick something, and then he did lose his first aerial, first like three or four aerial duels of the game, um, which I thought hurt the u.s in terms of trying to set a tone the other thing that i will say that i've heard from people internally and that actually Stu holden said on the broadcast this was a situational and matchup determined rotation by greg burhalter he chose carter vickers because iran and we saw it in the first half iran's a team that likes to sit back like they, they are entirely comfortable having 30 percent possession and if you're going to break down a bunker with the ball which is the stated the stated goal of Greg Berhalter as a as a manager, you want a center back who is comfortable taking space on the ball and making quick decisions against the bunker. And guess what? In the Scottish Premier League, Carter, Cameron Carter Vickers sees that every freaking week. <laughs> like that's that's what Celtic Celtic go up against every freaking week. So I like I think there's a good argument for him, but I still suspect that Zimmerman and Ream are the first choice pairing. And that leads me to suspect that um, Zimmerman and Ream will be what we see against the Netherlands. But it's like, it's a coin flip, right? There's yeah, like neither, none of these guys is, is, you know, prime Alessandro and Nesta. There's arguments for either of them. Mm -hmm. Both of them have done what really well through the group stage. Guys, like the U S just played 270 minutes against world cup caliber opponents gave up one goal. I that's where I'm at after all of this. Like I've been and a watching, penalty. But yeah, <laughs> and a penalty, right. Yeah, and like not a run of play. I've yep. been watching the US for almost 40 years. And I have never seen the US look like a team that can consistently hold up against World Cup caliber attacking threats. Mm -hmm. And in the past, even in 2002 and that team was so great, they weren't holding up, they were holding on. 
There, it was so much emergency defense. It was so much scrambling. And we've had great defenders who have been great at scrambling through the years, but we haven't had a team that could control the game and put out fires before they started and win second balls consistently because you're structured to do that. And that like, even with the last 20 minutes going complete tactics, free zone, that's still what we had from this U S team. And it's, uh, it's a credit to the players. It's a credit to the coach. Um, they absolutely 100% deserve to go through and to face a, a Netherlands team that frankly, I think is, um, they're ripe for the picking. Like this Netherlands mm -hmm. team is not as good as what they were in 2014 and certainly mm -hmm. not what they were in 2010. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So I love all this positivity. Agree with pretty much everything. Even from me, Susan. I Even know. From I, I, I don't know what to here? do. My head is sort of, I'm like, my mind is like, what is did we give, going on? Did we give Burhalter his flowers yet? I was just going to say, like, not, this, not yet. Did, this, did this game basically like it never will. save <laughs> Burhalter's career? My God. Um, I mean, so you all have defeated pressure. in group stages and they will still right? try to pick him apart. Right. Yeah, but it, it's, it's not you, just you, you can't undefeated. You can't pick him apart now. It, it's, I mean, it's the they way they scored that. It's the way they scored that goal. Let's be real. This, like the way the way the U.S. scored that goal, that was that was Greg Ball. That's what he yeah. said. Okay, let's look in, at this yes. goal. Let's look. Can in, we look at this goal again? And, and it's, so it's unfortunate because we only have the last couple, and this is all beautiful stuff. It's a perfect ball, perfect mm -hmm. run, and then it, credit to to Christian for sacrificing not just himself but maybe future generations of politics, if you know what I mean, uh, mm -hmm. to score this goal. Um, but what like this started with Matt Turner on the ball yeah. playing over the first line of the Iranian pressure. And the Iranians hadn't pressed at all in the first half, other than maybe the first five minutes. And as soon as they came up, the U S went into their kill patterns. They said, we know exactly how to play out of this. It was, you know, from, from Carter Vickers to Reem back to Turner. And then he plays this perfectly dimed pass to, to way at checking back into the half space, one touch to Musa, and then they're moving up field and they're moving up field so quickly, not like in a transition, but they're moving up field with enough pace so that Iran, they're just scrambling back to get into their shape. They're not scrambling back to get pressure to the ball. And that allows McKenney to get on the ball, no pressure on him, pick his head up and hit that perfect diagonal to mm -hmm. that perfect run from Serginio Dest. This is the goal Burhalter promised this team would score when he took over. It like I've been waiting for it. I really needed it today and they delivered in the biggest game in most of their lives. Mm -hmm. Um so as you mentioned though Doyle uh, this goal uh seemingly coming at a little bit of a cost Christian Pulisic left the game with what the US uh men's national team Twitter put out as a an abdominal injury. We can yeah, read into that. Knee took a knee to the pelvis a knee to the pelvis we'll the call pelvis. that yeah we'll call that the abdomen the yeah. abdomen <laughs> uh but you know we i don't know uh the severity of this um but if you know it hurts it, real bad Suze. i'm I'll sure say it that does it hurts real bad listen there is an equivalent for the ladies i'm just saying so <laughs> you know childbirth mm -hmm. um <laughs> I'm just kidding i don't know i do not have children uh, but <laughs> Regardless, this guy, this went off on a tangent. Um, if if Christian Pulisic is not good to go against the the Netherlands, what you know, if you're Burhalter, what what do you do? What well, you start? Do you bring, is it Aronson? Is yeah, it, you start Aronson. The... You start Aronson. I would have said Giorena, but Giorena is still not playing. Yeah. So you, you have to go with someone who's who's playing, who's who's fit, who's in form, and and that's that's Aronson. But. Mm -hmm. I think first off the bench would be Gio Reyna considering the options that you have. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't disagree with that. I, like my hope is look, I, I've heard from multiple people that Gio Reyna is not in fact, 100%. Like he, mm -hmm. he does not have more than 15 minutes in his legs. He came on against England. He did not sprint once in his 15 minutes on the field. Hopefully the extra days can get him closer to being 30 minutes fit because mm -hmm. You know, with his skill on the ball running against tired defenders, that's the ideal super sub. And, yeah. you know, all the nonsense that we've heard the past few days, you know, that Eric Winaldo was saying, that the, the QSMNT Twitter oh, yes. people are saying, is it's like that it's not true. It's just that it's absolutely not true. And we saw it after the game. Like Gio Reyna is hugging Greg Berhalter. Mm -hmm. Like it, it's, I guess it makes us a real soccer culture now when we have people 
behaving like that in the well, media. Well, yeah, people right? begging for clicks. I mean, coming up with is. these yeah. ludic ludicrous <laughs> statements just to uh, <laughs> look for clicks. I mean, yeah. get out of here with that. Anything for and clicks. If, if he's yeah. not fit, it's tough for him right now to get fit. The only way you get match fit is playing the games, right? But yeah. these guys are playing every four days. The trainings are pretty light because right now they're going to be recovering for the Netherlands match, right? So there's not a, a hard day where they can actually push it. So it's going to be tough to him. I, I for him, I, if he doesn't play, it's because he's not fit. You can't blame Greg for it. It's just unfortunate situation. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Um, yeah. we also there's another uh, another um injury that we saw today with uh, Josh Sargent, who it looked like initially we thought maybe it was um, a knee, but it looked like it was maybe his ankle as he jumped over um, a defender beta. Um, I know you, you were really, really high on his performance today. Um, you know, again, what do you, what do you think bro Halter does if, if Josh Sargent isn't good to go? Yeah, he was, I think he was phenomenal. Charlie was singing his praises earlier as well how much he was doing before he got injured, unfortunately. Um, but we'll see. I, I, we all kind of thought it was a hyperextension of the knee. Yeah. We're not doctors, so we don't really know. But it, it looks like he was getting the ankle treated. So I'm hoping maybe it's just a little bit of a jam. Give him a couple days and he should be fine. But um, I don't know. What do, you, what do you think? Wright comes back in and kind of keep it the same rather than Mixing too much up. Uh, I think Aronson for sure, if Pulsich can't play, but this mm -hmm. one's this one's a little, this one's a little bit more, more up for debate. Mark. Yeah. Yeah. Haji didn't cover himself in glory in this game, but he, yeah. Yeah. I, I think yeah. the US will be playing against the ball a little bit more against that that Dutch team. And look, the one real good moment Haji had came when he pulled out to that left channel. He was able to, I think, mega guy and almost set up mm -hmm. a chance for Aronson. Like that. That'll probably be there. So I, I would assume it would be Haji Wright if Sargent can't go. But I did notice after, you know, in the, the post game as the U.S. were taking a, a, a lap and clapping, Sargent was out there. He looked like he was walking fine. He looked at, okay. And the other thing, you guys know this better than I do, I'm sure. But like when you hyperextend something, when you land awkwardly like that, like for five minutes, you're absolutely terrified that you just did something wrong. That mm -hmm. something that something snapped that some that you're not going to be able to cover with, and I think maybe the shock of the moment got to Sergeant a little bit because he was in tears almost immediately on the ground. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. Especially at the biggest stage, you know, the World Cup. You you're pretty devastated if it is serious or not. You're pretty devastated even if you have to come off. Mm -hmm. And so I think we saw that, you know, whether he was it was zone. serious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he really was. Yeah, so whether it was a serious injury or not you definitely saw the emotions uh, on his face. So hopefully he's okay though. Okay. So let's, um, let's pretend that everyone is totally fully fit and that Greg Berhalter has every option in front of him for this uh, upcoming matchup against the Netherlands, um, which I believe is happening on Saturday. I can't read. Is it Saturday? Saturday, December 3rd at 10 AM. Um, this is Doyle. You said it. I mean, historically, like we think about, uh, the Netherlands is being a a, a a contender at every single World Cup. But this is, you said it, it's there for the taking with this particular team. They haven't looked um, very convincing. They've had some some moments, but um, if what what's the approach? What's the approach? It's a good question. I think a lot of it depends on how much gas uh, Musa and McKenney have in the tank. Because they they like I thought Weston put in such a you know such a shift when he was very obviously less than fully fit. And then Yunus Musa, um, when he has his legs, he's absolutely incredible, but he lost his legs by about the hour mark. And he was just holding on for dear life the last half hour. If those guys can recover, and I have no questions about Tyler Adams, Tyler Adams is preaching, approaching like Frankie Hayduck levels of like stamina <laughs> and energy out there. Mm -hmm. It's insane to watch this guy go. But if those three guys are good to go, if they believe that, they, like I like the U.S. midfield better than the Dutch midfield. I yeah. said get on the ball and go at them. The flip side is that between Gakpo and Depay, um, it, like they don't need the ball. They they like they could just get one little moment, skin somebody or create just a, a, a 2v3, leave everybody in the dust and and put the ball in the back of net. Those guys are that good. But I think like look, I, I don't think the U.S. should play scared against the Dutch. I think okay. I think England's a better team than the Dutch are, and, and the U.S. didn't play scared against them. Um, so I bottle that, 
you're playing with house money at this point. Um, you know, go all in, man. Go very, all very, in, Charlie. Very beatable team. It's a very Charlie, beatable team. Charlie, I know you gotta you gotta yeah. run soon. So give us give us your thoughts on uh, this matchup with the the Netherlands. Well, well, Doyle said it perfectly. It, the we we have a better midfield. I know mm-hmm. Frankie De Jong is class, but ultimately we can overtake. They play a a three uh, three five two. I mean, mm-hmm. and so when you look at Holland, they haven't been so convincing in, in, in the group stages. Um, Ecuador were the better team. Yep. Uh, Senegal had they had Sadio Mane in that game, they win. Mm-hmm. They, yeah. they, yep. they 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 adjusted as it went on because. They're trying to figure out how do we score goals. Like Sadio Mane is such a presence scoring goals and creating goals. With him not on the pitch, who takes that role? And Ishmael Saar is is the player who did that for them and eventually is now um, the person responsible for creating all their opportunities. But Holland is not convincing for me. And Mm -hmm. they're a little bit soft. So if we play with that same intensity that we did against against England, this has upset written all over. Heck yeah. So... (laughs) Count me in. State, state, states. Let's go, Never let's a go, doubter. Let's go. let's go. I'm hyped. Sayonara. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Beta. Beta, what are you going to be watching for um, in this matchup between the U.S. and the Netherlands? Yeah, it's, it's to be defensively sound again. Look at the past seven or eight games leading up to the World Cup. I know Greg gets a lot of criticism for not scoring the goals and playing this, you know, great offensive game, but they haven't given up many goals, Mm. you know? And so it's been said for many, many years now, defense wins championships. You're in a world cup. It's a tournament. Okay. If you don't give up goals, you're giving yourself a pretty good chance at winning. And so continue, continue that trend. I I think Matt met like said it perfectly. This was Greg ball, that goal that they scored against Iran. The flashbacks, right? The Columbus crew, they yeah. hit it out wide. <laughs> Awful is uh, overlapping, hits yeah. it across the Jossie, tap. You know, like we've seen this many times. People will say, why don't you do it more? Well, it's his national team. You have to be a little careful. You're mm-hmm. playing against better competition, so on and so forth. But uh, I expect more of the same from the U.S. I think it's it's been good. Don't give up many opportunities. The only goal they gave up so far was on a penalty. Yep. Uh, and you know, I think they'll be all right. I, I, I don't think it's a, it's I, Charlie said upset. I don't think it's gonna be a huge upset. I think the U S can win. I Let's really do. Oh. In, in, the, in the world. And, yeah. It's an upset. On the world rank. Sure. To the world. Yeah. But I think the U S can win. Ooh. Oh, Saturday, uh, December 3rd, 10 AM. It was a pleasure. People. Doyle. Pleasure. Um, Great seeing guys, you, brother. This Great was seeing amazing. You. Tell the um, fam I say sure. hi. Guys, turn it over to MLS's Twitter right now so you can catch um, our club and country today with Bobby Warshaw and David Goss. We'll be breaking down all of today's action. I'm crashing the, I'm this, crashing this the party, match. Suze. I'm, I'm oh, jumping Doyle? in. Doyle? Doyle's going to be there? Oh, my God. I mean, guys, even more reason. Uh, it's going to be a so brown we'll... liquor special, Suze. Yes! I'm just telling you. <laughs> Let's go. Um, oh, and man. also, uh, I know it, it Canada has already been eliminated, but we're having a watch along for their matchup against Morocco um, on Thursday. That game is at 10 a.m., I believe, so we'll probably be live 9.45. Uh, Mehdi Belushi is going to be on that show. He is a phenomenal human being, a phenomenal soccer brain, uh, knows a lot about that Moroccan national team. So definitely catch that out on uh, MLS's Twitch and YouTube. But thank you so much to all the thousands of people who tuned in um to this watch along we appreciate you we appreciate all your comments and questions um go usa baby we will see you in the knockout rounds peace out